Today, I've got three vintage Halloween DIYs, a swag, a sign, and more. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. We are going to start off with some of these little pipe cleaners. I got black, and then I've got a variety of raffia in different colors. I've got some metallic mesh. You can use whatever color you like, but this is 10 inch mesh. I'm only gonna need part of one roll. I have a roll of mesh ribbon that is black and a variety of thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbons. And then I have three of these gorgeous Dollar Tree yard stakes. The skeleton, the cat, and the pumpkin, and they all have little hats on. So these came from obviously the Halloween section. You can see the information here. And then I'm going to take a three foot long yard stick to make our swag. We're going to start by removing the tags and the stakes from each one of these. If you can save your stakes, you can use those for other projects. I managed to save two and broke the end off of the last one. But I can still use it for other things. Oh, just broke that off of there. Be careful, they do have little, uh, like little staples in the back side of the stake, so just be careful not to hurt yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go down this, just like I've done in another video. I'm just going to go about an inch down and take your pipe cleaners and twist off to the side. We're going to put another one to twist off to the other side. I've done this before, and I will try to leave a link to the lady whose video I watch where I learned how to make these. And you can go check her channel out. She does really, really cute stuff. So we're going to go all the way down here in 15 sections. Two, then one, then two, then one, all the way down to the end. And we're going to cut our mesh. I'm using a rotary cutter and a mat, but you can use scissors if you want to. I've just found this is a little bit easier to do. And I'm going to be using, I think I use 12 inch sections of this, maybe 10 or 12, something like that. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. I will try to count them and give you the information in the description box, but you would just want to be sure that you have enough for all of your little wires there. All right, we're going to have to have something to secure these onto our swag. So I'm using these pipe cleaners, some hot glue, and little scraps of paper that I've already got cut down. I like to use scraps from like the backing of stickers and things like that that come from Dollar Tree and just cut those into strips and you can use them again. And we're going to do that to each one of these. And then set them aside to let them cool because you don't want to be twisting those around while the glue is still wet because they'll just pop right off. So while those are drying, we're going to start with our cruffles. What you're going to do is take your mesh, you're going to roll over two or three times, and then take your fingers and do like you're a little tickling motion. Walk your fingers down that mesh, flip it around, twist the other side two or three times, and pinch it in the middle. So you almost have like a little bow tie, but that neatly tucks in all of your loose frays in the inside. You're going to do the same thing with each one of those. If you've got a bunch of clips and you want to do this all before you start attaching them, you can certainly do that. But my experience with this mesh is that it will attach and crawl onto everything you have in your craft space. So if you don't want a big mess, it might be easier for you to do one bundle at a time. So on every section that you see here that goes off to the sides, we're going to do two. So there'll be two on this side, there'll be two on the other side, and then in the middle, there will be two in the middle. We're just making a little X and then attaching those down, if that makes sense. Just showing you here again, a little bit slower so you can see. Make an X, put your X down in the center of your pipe cleaner, and then give that a few twists to hold that in place. All right, after you have that done, we are going to start cutting down our little pieces of ribbon. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're going to have nine pieces cut for each one. 
we're going to do longer pieces for this because it's going to be folded over. So you want to be sure that these are longer, and I think I've got about 16 inches for those. We're going to make almost like we would lay out a messy bow. We're going to take one of each piece of these ribbons like this, and then on top we're going to let that loop over like it already wants to do, about an inch and a half or two inches. Place that on top in a loop, and then you're just going to start walking your fingers toward the center, just like that. And so the little top section looks like a bow. It's coming out there, but you can see you just tuck it back in there. You can use, if you can't hold this all in your hand, it's totally okay to go ahead and use twist ties or something like that on it to hold it before you put it down. Excuse my head, I stood up to do this so I could make sure that you could see what I'm doing. So I was underneath my viewfinder. I try to stay out of the way, but every now and then I do get kind of in the way. So I do apologize for that. And, and it was a bad hair day. It was a very bad hair day. I think it's fitting that it's in a Halloween video and it looks like I'm wearing a disastrous wig. Okay, so continuing along, we're going to do the same thing. Pinch it in the middle, press that down, pinch it up in the middle. And then we're gonna place that down. Just make sure that you're not untwisting your pipe cleaner that's there on the bottom. Make sure that if you've gotten in a habit of going clockwise, continue to go clockwise or whichever way so that you don't untwist your items. I hope that made sense. I think I need more coffee. Okay, so continuing along, we're going to skip the middle sections. We're only gonna do the sections that lay to the side. The reason we're doing that is because, well, it would be a waste of ribbon because we're going to have our little Halloween faces on each of those little blank spots. So all you would be doing is covering it up if you did put it in the middle. So we're just gonna leave it off. Save our ribbon for some other projects. Continuing along all the way down. Now you could always dovetail your, your pieces before you start if you want, but you certainly don't have to because I ended up doing it later anyway. Okay, there we go. Twisty, twisty. And then the last section on the bottom is a single section, but I'm going to put it on the bottom anyway. So that's the only little middle section that's going to get a bow. Begin to fluff. We all know how to fluff, especially if you've been watching my videos. I'm crazy about the bow fluffing. Fluffing simply means pulling your sections apart so you can see each one of your little colors. See, I, it, I undid my bow, not a big deal, just twist it back on. Fluff them out, pick them up, lift them, twist them, whatever you need to do so that you can get all the pretty sides facing forward. And then, yes, it would have been easier to dovetail this in the beginning, but you know, sometimes you get started on a project and you're not exactly sure but I ended up liking this, so I went ahead and went with it. And then I'll spare you. You don't want to watch me dovetail this entire thing, but you know, just so you get an idea, that's what you do. And we're going to go all the way down, fixing it up. Now, in the little bald spot where you have no ribbon, that's where we're going to twist our little black ties around and attach the sign to that swag that is underneath it. You can kind of play with your ribbon, play with your cruffles, fix them so that they are displayed in whatever way that you find pleasing. And then we're going to continue around. If you have any pieces of wires that are still showing, tuck them into the insides or clip them off, whichever way you choose. And then continue on until you get every one of your little signs fastened down. Oh, this cat is the cutest one, I think. It is so cute. Okay, so now I'm just arranging the faces and I'm kind of, you know, one goes one way, one goes the other way. Just trying to get it. Yep, looks good to me. So then we're gonna turn it over and then go ahead and attach those down where they're not gonna come loose. You wanna make sure that they're all about the same depth in there so they don't fall off. Now this is not gonna be on a glass door. If it was, then you would wanna spray paint your 
your yardstick black, you know, something that would be more appealing to look at, but I'm not going to be looking at mine and I did not glue down my ties. That way I could do another project with this same long yardstick if I choose. I have some more of this table scatter left over and it is orange and black. I think it looks good with what I have going on here. It is glittery. It came from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to, first of all, cut down some of these pieces and cover up the little holes where the hangers were on these stakes. Um, that's where the price tags were. I really don't know any other reason you would want it there. I guess it was just for um, the store to show them, maybe. I don't know. But I can't think of a good reason why a stake would have a hole in the top. Anyway, moving along. You can use any ornaments you want to, or you don't have to use ornaments at all, but to embellish, I thought ornaments would be really cute. And these are the ones that you can get, of course, at Dollar Tree. And they come in these little tubes, and you can get a variety of different ones, depending on what stakes that you choose, whatever will match what you have going on in yours. So I've just chosen black and orange for mine. We got a little bit of glitter in the signs. I'm not a big glitter person, but I think at holiday time, especially like Halloween and maybe some at Christmas, I think it looks, it's whimsical. You know, it's fun. Those are holidays that are supposed to be fun. I'm not into anything that is scary and that would, you know, gross you out. I guess, I don't know if you, if people even use the term gross you out anymore. Um, I'm 48 years old, so that is something that I still say. I just like the stuff that's cute. And I have young kids in my house and I don't wanna scare them to death. Okay, so if you remember my last video, I did the little cauldron, we made the fire underneath. Well, it gave me an idea that it would make also something really cute to put on this sign. So I'm gonna just put this around my hand, three colors here, I'm gonna do it all at one time. And I wrapped them around about 10 times. And then once I get to the end, I'm just gonna trim it off. And I'm going to tie it up the same way as I did before. Just making sure that my loose ends are definitely in there. Use whatever colors are going to coordinate with what you have going on. So I'm just going to tie that in a double knot so it doesn't come out. Going to pull that down, hold on to the the knot where I tied it and just cut that straight through the bottom, almost like you're making a tassel. And I thought, you know what? This is so cute. It kind of looks like straw and it just reminds me of like um, a carnival or like a haunted hayride or something like that, you know, that you would maybe go to in autumn. And it just, it looks rustic to me. It looks really cute, I think. What do you think? Okay, so now we can choose one of the signs if you want to, you don't have to, but I've chosen one that was already on one of the picks we had. I mean, why not use it? It's right there. Gonna use a good bit of glue and this dowel because I had it there. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back to attach that together and a little bit of paper that I've just went ahead and bent over and protect your hands because it's super hot. And then we're just gonna attach this to the back of that sign. You attach that down, it'll stay still for you. And this is kind of what you got. I'm gonna flip it over and use just a piece of wire here attached to that frame, and that's gonna be your hanger. Do you like this? I really like this. I think it turned out better than I thought it would. You can certainly make this thicker, wider if you would like. You can use um, a thicker mesh besides the 10 inch, maybe use something bigger than that. But I think this works really good for what I needed. It's, I think, a good inspiration piece for you to play off of, whatever it is that you like, whatever theme that you like. Dollar Tree has lots of really cute picks, and from what I'm seeing, you can also get a lot of good stuff from Dollar General. So just see what you have, see what you like to use, and go for it. I love vintage Halloween. I've been doing it for a few years now and I just, I really love it. I think it's, I think it's fun. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll be glad to see you there. 
Project number two, we're gonna make a vintage Halloween sign. This is super, super easy. This is a beginner crafter project. These are little thrifted, they're magnets actually. They have, they're like a material, like a stuffed material and fabric. This is a little metal sign that came in a three pack from Dollar Tree and I had spray painted it and used it on a project last year. This is a thrifted sign that I had hand lettered to use on my coffee bar. And I've used it for several years now, so it's time to give it new life. We're going to use it for something else. You just wipe all the dust away when you do that. Then I'm going to cut down some scrapbook paper. Use whatever you like. You can even use wrapping paper. I'm going to trim it down so that it fits inside of my frame. I think that the colors uh, work well with this. A little bit of a glue stick, and that's going to hold it in place in that frame on that sign. Then I'm just going to take my little wallpaper tool here and just lay that down just like that. And then decide which one of these little fabric pieces I want to have in my frame. And I really like the cat and the full moon. That looks cute together. So a little hot glue quickly because this dries super fast and just pop that on. If you want it to be permanent, you need to use something like E6000 or super glue or some type of epoxy to make yours stay down because these will eventually pop off. All right, and once that's down, I'm going to add a little bow. I'm just gonna use some of the lighter orange and the black and just tie a really simple bow here. Just like that, and it's just a little double bow. And pull that out and fix it how you want it to look. It's very easy to work with this. And then decide where I want to put my little bow, and I think I'm going to make it look like a bow tie underneath my little pumpkin here. Close enough. And a little candy corn embellishment. How's that? Not bad at all. You can certainly do this. Okay, now for the next project. This is the vintage Halloween mini garland. We're gonna use some thin black ribbon, some ornaments from Dollar Tree, and the rest of my little pieces here. I did leave out the witch because her colors did not match what I had going on, so she's to the side for another project. You're gonna cut a couple of pieces of jute to make some little loops to go on the back of each one of these pieces, and that's going to be uh, like a little hanger. You don't have to do this if you don't want to use a hanger because I do later end up having to glue it down to make it stay in place. But it works. It works until I get everything where it needs to be. All right, so I'm going to start off with a little black glittery ornament. Then I'm going to add the cat and then an orange ornament. And then another one, and you can see I've got a pattern. I've got a little pattern going here. Then when I know about how long I want it to be, I'm gonna tie a knot over that black ornament in the bottom. Now we're gonna make some little tassels. I'm gonna make three loops in this. Same thing as you've already seen me do on the other stuff. It's old news by now. You are a professional at making these things. This is gonna be a little bit of a variation. You make it the same way, but it's gonna be tied down and then we're gonna make the tassel out of it. So I just put it all together, trimmed it up to make sure that it was nice and even on the bottom. Now I'm just going to tie it onto that piece of string. Tie one of those between each one of the ornaments. Then I'm gonna take another piece of the raffia, go down about a half an inch to an inch, and then tie a knot right there. And there we have a little tassel. You can take a little dot of hot glue and press that down and make that little tie become part of your tassel. And you can see here, that's what I've done here. Otherwise, it wants to fluff out. Tie that on. And this is gonna be a cute little short garland that you could use on your coffee bar. You could use this on a tiered tray. You could use this on maybe even like your vanity mirror or a bathroom mirror, maybe in a kid's room on the, maybe a dresser mirror or something like that. It's just a little garland for a small place that I think has a big impact. It's very festive looking. 
Now I'm just trying to make sure that my tassels are about the same size. And then once I get them where I want them to be, and I know how much spacing I need, I'll go ahead and glue them down. And so that's what you see me do, doing there. I'm just gluing down the ornaments, the garland, and the little cloth pieces. Just like that. It's very inexpensive and pretty easy to make. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. Our family is growing. We're almost at 4,000 and I am just overjoyed to have every one of you here. I appreciate the comments, the support, the love every time you share a video. Which one of these are you gonna try? Do you like vintage? I've got some more coming. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Today, I have three Victorian witch DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. I'm starting with the Victorian witch hat. This is a wire form that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to give you some measurements here so that you can find something similar if you don't have any at your Dollar Tree. You can certainly trace this out on a piece of foam board and make your own form. It'll work too. I've done that before on witch hats. I have some felt, just a little scrap here, but it's enough to cover most of my form. And this is going to be the backing. You could maybe use some construction paper or something like that on the back of yours if you choose. But this works for me because I had some scraps that I need to go through anyway. So rather than donating, let's use it. Leave about an inch around each of the sides of the form, and then I'm going to cut into the corners here because we're gonna wrap this around the wire form. Now my glue temperature setting is on low, so it's a cooler temperature. It's going to be easier to work with because I'm gonna be using a lot of glue, and it's going to prevent some materials that I use later on that are questionable when you're using a very high temp glue gun. So we're just gonna use cool, for this project. I'm just bending that over now, pressing it down onto this form and onto itself. It doesn't matter that my corners aren't covered. You'll see what we do with that later, but certainly if you have enough material to cover yours, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna wrap the bottom here. I find that using a squiggly line or a little zigzag gives me a little bit better coverage. I'm just pressing that down. You don't want to squeeze your form up. You don't want to change the shape of that wire and it's pretty pliable. So just be careful there. Follow the shape of your form. And I'm gonna go all the way around and do the same thing. This is going to be the back. So what you're seeing is actually the inside and you'll understand that in a few minutes. You'll see what I'm gonna do. So the point is gonna go a little bit higher than the actual point on the witch's hat because I like the sharper taper on this. So there we go. It's got a little ratty looking end. I am totally okay with that. Now I'm gonna take a pillow. This is just one I'm gonna use to take the stuffing out of. I don't have any pillowcases to fit it, so it was also in the donation pile. I'm just gonna take that apart, fluff it out really well so it's not compacted or too lumpy. We want it to be cloud-like or wispy. Then I'm gonna take, again, the cooler temperature glue, start squeezing that out on the bottom of the triangle part of this hat. We're not going to go onto the flat or brim part of the hat with this. I wanna get, this is gonna be like a padding, so our hat's gonna have some dimension rather than being a flat hat. So we're just gonna continue along like this and make sure that it is on the inside and not bulging out over the outside, making sure we don't have any lumps that are bigger than anything else. And we're gonna start off with a layer that's going to be pretty much the same width or thickness all the way down. I'm gonna continue along and you can see that we have that nice and covered. We can still see all of the black edges and that's good, we wanna do that. 
Now about halfway down or two thirds of the way down, we're gonna start thickening up on that section. That's gonna be a little wider, just like it would be with a regular hat. It's gonna be wider at the bottom because that's where your hat goes. It's where your head goes. Okay, so I love this contact paper. It came from the Dollar Tree. I've seen it used on lots of videos and lots of projects, but I thought what a beautiful, shabby, chic, witch's hat this would make. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to peel this apart and you're going to see that I have a little bit of a problem here getting off a clean finish, but that doesn't matter. That's not going to show. It's going to be kind of trimmed off. So you see there on the side, a little messy. That's okay. All right. So the pretty side down. Now I'm going to put the fluffy side of the hat down on top of it. So all of that batting is now on the adhesive side of that contact paper. Now I'm going to trim this out as well. Just going to start by trimming in the bottom, and I want to leave more than an inch on the sides. I want to leave more of like probably two inches because we want to allow for the room that the, the batting on the inside creates, or that pillow fluff. We don't want to squish it down till it's flat. So just pulling it and wrapping it around, pressing this down. My contact paper stuck just fine to this felt. If yours does not, go ahead and use a little bit of that glue or maybe some spray adhesive to help tack it down there. So I'm just going to wrap that part and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the brim there. I'm pressing it down. Then I'm going to cut and fold it down. That way I can still create that curve on the bottom. So see there? Now we still have that nice flat front just like this and we have the curve so making sure that the batting is not in the brim go ahead and pull that down and start pressing it down on the felt on the bottom of the back of that brim now you can either trim off that extra on the bottom or you can wrap it around it won't matter I'm just wrapping the tip up there elongating that hat just a tad and you can see that it's padded it's got some dimension and I love the look of it it came out exactly how I saw it in my mind and you know when you're crafting it doesn't always turn out that way you start with the idea and you think I'm gonna run with this and then you go completely off course and you do something else I like it when a plan comes together okay so we're gonna start with this lacy black trim this came from uh, Goodwill you can get yours wherever you like. Then you're gonna start laying it down. Now I want that, excuse my head, I want that line down there close to the bottom for my first row because we're gonna layer this going upwards and I want it to be thick and lush. So that means we're going to have to layer it pretty tightly in here. Now because I'm using a cool temp glue, it that bead of glue will sit right there on that. If you use hot glue, it's gonna run down on your table and you're gonna make a mess gonna continue along just like this layering over the top about hmm, probably a quarter of an inch I would say you can see where I'm running that bead of glue for each one of those layers and you can do it all the way up keep in mind this is a curved and if you're using a straight piece of ribbon you may need to kind of bunch it up a little bit to get it to fit the curves of your hat Okay, so we're gonna cut it a little bit longer because we wanna cover up that top piece. So you're just gonna fold your lace over and press it down. That's gonna give it the little black edge there. Just gonna tuck under here and then keep going. And I'm going to do this process until I get up where the hat meets the brim. So the base of the hat, the triangle there, meets the brim. Easy enough, right? And I think one more run will be perfect. Y'all have to excuse my head. I'm standing up because I had to raise my camera way up high to be able to get this in the view for you. Okay, so same thing here. It's curved. We're just going to curve it on around, let it do its thing. We're not going to see it from the back, so this is not going to matter. Now, I also found this pretty mesh at uh, Goodwill as well. And I thought, well, it's a piece of, I guess, sheer material, sheer fabric. I'm just going to kind of accordion fold it or gather it up like this. 
and we're going to tie this to make like a sash around the hat. Now I did not have any longer piece than this. I would have loved to have it hanging down like a veil, but I didn't have enough for that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I had to use it on this piece though. Clearly it had to be used. It's very Victorian. I'm going to take that glue again on a cooler temp. And be very careful that you don't burn your fingers, but the thickness of this is allowing me to touch it without hurting myself. And I'm gonna press it down. And then you wanna flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Keep it in mind that you wanna keep it as low down to the brim as you can so there's no gaps. Just like that. And by the way, if you're looking for any of the products that I use, most of my tools can be found linked below in the description box. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so just so that you know that, um, I want to let you know that I do earn a tiny bit of money from it, but it, it's at no extra cost to you. So I just put those down there because I think it would be helpful to you, and if it helps you, then it helps me. Okay, so rather than tying in a knot, which would take up too much of the length of my little sash here. I've decided just to loop it over and tie it off. And I'm just tying it off with a little scrap piece of raffia that I have. But you can use ribbon, you can use a zip tie, whatever you want to use if you want to do it the same way as me. Now it's time to make it look very fancy. We're going to start using some picks. Use any type of black picks you have if we're doing black and white. I have some Weeping Willow, I have a Dollar Tree pick, and I have some thrifted, I think those are oak leaves down there. And I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see what I have, and see how I want to fix this for this hat. You could always go right across the brim on the bottom if you would like to do it this way. But I think I'm going to try something different. So trim up where you need to trim. And layer these on, just like I'm doing here. I try to keep these in my hand once I start cutting them down so I know exactly where to put my ties. These little picks from Dollar Tree are amazing, in my opinion. There's so many different pieces on there. You can really trim them up and cut them down. You'll see me do that on a project later in this video as well. So right now, we're just going to leave this as one piece. I'm going to take that bottom, that second piece of oak stem, and put it across the bottom where the stems are so that you can't see them. And it is hid, and it makes a beautiful little swag, don't you think? I have some black zip ties. I'm going to put those around here. These are great. They come in a huge pack from Dollar Tree, so you really, really save money by buying them there. Clip it off. And then now we need to attach it down to our hat. Now, I already had this piece left from the sash, which is glued firmly in place. So I feel like it's going to be strong enough for this part just to tie it on right across where we attached it with a zip tie. So that's what I'm doing. Tying it off in a few knots, trimming that off because we don't need it anymore. It's done its job. And then I'm going to see how I want it to hang. Do I want it to lay off to the side? Do I want it to stand up a little bit more? I think it needs a little bit more support. So I'm going to just take a piece of floral wire and flip this over and attach it right from the little stem here to the frame underneath and it stands up like this just off to a little slant and you can see here where I twisted it right there it's staying in place quite nicely just like that okay so now the bottom part of our hat is done we need to work on the top up there I've got some of this really cool mesh tubing and it's kind of like uh, spiky or tinsel-y like. It's got little things poking out of it. I don't know what you call that. But um, I got those from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section. And I thought, that's so cute. And it kind of looks like spider legs. So I'm just going to tie those up. And then I want to put a jewel on there, right? Yes, a ruby would be beautiful since we have that red rose. So I'm just going to put some glue in the center and place down this beautiful jewel because this is a very regal witch and we want her to look lovely. And by the way, these leaves are velvet. They're so pretty. I'm going to tie this on and then tie it right on that little extra piece at the end of the hat. 
It elongates that hat. It really brings your eye up there and continues that beautiful richness from the top all the way down through the bottom. Once I've got it tied on, I'm going to glue it down because that is contact paper, which has a slick surface, and this could easily pop off. So I'm going to glue it down and trim it up and a little more glue behind that stone just to hold it in place. And I have no idea where I got this stone from. It was, has been in my craft supplies, so I'm not sure where it came from. Now, I wanted to dull this down just a bit because it was coming off a little bright. And she is a witch, so she's probably had this hat for a millennia. So I took my little furniture markers and just colored that down a little bit and uh, deepened up that color. Now for the hanger, I'm just going to use a twisted piece of floor wire into a loop, press it down right over where that rope or that little piece of jute was before, let it dry, and then it's ready to hang. What do you think? This is definitely a different spin on a witch hat, for sure. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, now we have a Victorian dress form. If you don't have something like this that I got at Goodwill, you can definitely use those floral foams. One, you would just cut like the top third of it off and invert it on top of a, another one that is completely one piece. And then you would get basically the same shape. But I'm gonna show you how to use it with what we have. So, some greenery picks in a reddish color. I've got another Dollar Tree pick, some red ribbon, and some more of that black trim. Love these. I should have gotten more. Really, really love them. I think they come in a purple, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a purple. Okay, so I have scraps of this left. And I thought, you know what? Let's do a wreath form. Let's, let's give her a beautiful ball dress. So, of course, proportionately, you would never wear these two things together. But it gives you an idea of her having her dressing station and all of her goodies set up so that she can be beautiful and she can be queen of the Halloween ball. That's how I see this witch. She's a good witch. She's not bad. Okay, so to cover this top part, I'm just putting some little darts almost in here so that the bodice part, which is where my hand is, would go over the chest, would narrow down into the waist. And so in order to make that lay flat, I need to cut some slits up to that area and then just press it down. Very simple. And then you will see that it starts to have somewhat of a female shape. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim this off here because there's gonna be something very special about this dress that you'll see at the end of the video, so be sure you stick around. Okay, now, because I don't have anything to really attach my contact paper to, I'm gonna use a little bit of clear tape. The bottom of this dress is gonna be wrapped with contact paper. This is so I have a nice, even, easy surface to attach down my lace trim. So I'm just gonna cut down my contact paper. I got this from Dollar Tree, so you can find yours there. It's gonna be about the same height as it would be up to the waist area of that dress. Cut it down, take the backing off, and then I'm just going to lay it where it needs to be. Now, for this shape, I'm gonna basically try to get the bottom to fit first. So I'm sticking it down on the tape that's there. And that's why the tape is there. It has something for the contact paper to grip to. So I'm just pressing down with my fingers and I'm going to be trimming off what I don't need. So once we get all the way around, I won't need any excess. It's just in the way anyway. I'm gonna cut down to where the bottom of the dress starts to taper upward and then pull and overlap. You're not gonna see this, it is not a problem, but there you go. Now it's like a little closed in cage and we can put all of this lace right on top. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and start going around. Again, please use your cool temperature and protect your fingers. I didn't do it here. I should have had my finger protectors on, but I really wanted to get this video out to you, so I was rushing. People are enjoying, it seems, my Halloween content, so I am trying to make sure that I give you lots and lots to look at, lots of inspiration. I know I feel very inspired when I get comments from you guys and 
you know, encouragement and love and support, it really makes me keep going. It really keeps me motivated and um, it just lightens my mood. It lightens my day and it makes this amount of work so much easier to do. So I appreciate it so much. Can you guys believe we are over 4,000 now? 4,200 and something. So if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look in the link down in the description box. Thank you. It's certainly not required, but I'll give you a shout out. Okay, so when we get to the top and we're trying to finish off the waist section, we're just gonna fold this over kind of straight and then trim it down. Don't worry if this doesn't look perfect because we are going to embellish this, of course. So what do you think? This is a pretty little dress. Got her beautiful flowers on the top and the lace layers on the bottom. And we need to make the lace lay flat. So we're just gonna take a couple of snips here into the natural little areas where the lace goes upward. We're just gonna put some little slits there and that's gonna help it lay flat when we put it down. So you'll see in just a moment, it's gonna be a little blurry, but you, you get the gist. Okay, see? See now, it'll stand up straight and you can see the little lace on the bottom. I want to trim the top, so I've cut a piece of lace down. You can see how I'm trying to see how much I need. I'm gonna trim it. I'm gonna use that cool glue again. And then working in little sections, I'm going to go around the top with just the trim part of that lace and press it down right over the top. Just like that. Are you guys enjoying this video? Do you like witch decor and your Halloween? Good witch, of course. Nothing bad, nothing negative, nothing, you know. This is a this is a good witch. This could be Glinda the good witch at Halloween. Who knows? But I hope you do like it. And I've got lots of Halloween videos and all kinds of inspiration and goodness. So be sure you check out those videos as well. I will have them linked. All right, I'm just gonna give a little extra trim here to cover up any extra glue or mess that I have there and it's the same mesh I'm just gonna go around there do not press this mess blah, blah, blah. <laughs> do not press the mesh down too firmly because it will go flat on you it will be completely flat instead of cylindrical like that next we're going to put uh, almost like a belt and we're gonna cut off a piece of ribbon here for that and I'm going to cut my ends in a slant. You can dovetail um, or anything that you prefer to do on yours. And you don't have to use wired ribbon and you don't have to use a piece that is this big. Totally up to you, whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one of these picks and continue to cut it apart because we're gonna use this in separate parts. This is a smaller item, so the little spray of flowers that we're going to put on her waistline is going to be a bit smaller in scale than what is on the hat. So I'm just, you know, kind of looking around, seeing what I think I might like. I love this. And this is not a rose. This is like a carnation, I think. Okay, so I'm going to play around with my placement. See how I want each one of these little individual picks to go. You do whatever looks good to you. And certainly you don't even have to cut this apart. You could leave it into one piece if you like the way it was or just bend it around on the wires. But you'll have to cut the big stalk, that big chunk on the bottom off so that it lays flat. It's just gonna be easier for you to work with. Take another one of those zip ties and zip it up. Trim off your extra. I always use my clippers because I don't wanna mess up my scissors. So I use these little bull nose pliers Okay, now I'm just twisting around their own wire, so you can do that. And then going to decide how I want this to lay. What's gonna be the top, what's gonna be the bottom. I'm gonna use this little ribbon sash that we made, and it's gonna go right around that section. It's gonna hold it down better than glue would hold it. Well, that's my opinion. That's my opinion and experience. And I've been doing this a long time. I always say, do what works for you. Now, I wanna add some more red in here. And I think that the beautiful reddish color in these leaves from this thrifted pick will work great in here. 
So I'm just going to add two of these pieces, just the oak pieces off of here. Thread it up. If you have extra pieces of wire, just cut those off. Just like that. Now you can put some picks in the top if you would like, and you will have a beautiful little arrangement. Those are my leftover picks. Or you can leave it just as it is. Whatever you choose to do is going to be great. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Okay, easiest one we got, our Deadly Delight jar. This is a jar that I thrifted and I put a just a decal on several years ago. I'm going to use some more of that batting. You can get all kinds of rub-on decals, by the way, at Dollar Tree. I'm going to put that batting on the inside. I have a little bag of creatures. This came from Dollar General a few years ago. I like to buy these things for the kids so that they can do projects and that we can make goodie bags for Halloween at school. So I've just picked out all the black ones because that's kind of the theme we're going with in here. And I'm going to place some of them down in that batting or that fluff. Just like that. Here and there and on the outside and sitting on top. And it's going to look sort of like this. Then we're going to take one of these little lights from Dollar Tree, pull the tab out of the bottom and turn it on. And it's gonna look just like that. I'm gonna make a little hole. I'm just using my fingers and the back of my little spatula here. And I'm gonna turn that light back on and poke it down as far as I can get it in there, cover the top, cover it up with a spider and put the lid back on it. And then we're going to have a little spooky, deadly delight jar that's glowing. It looks better when the light's off, believe me. Okay, so those are our three witchy projects. Our Victorian shabby chic fancy witch. And here's what our little arrangements are going to look like displayed. What do you think about this? I gotta tell you, I'm kind of digging this. And you know I love my orange, black, and white, but something about this, even my husband said he really liked that. He couldn't believe that I made it. I love that. So encouraging. There we go. Look at that. So would you put something in the top of that or just leave it as is? And look at the bottom. I put a candle in there. It's a flameless candle, so now her dress will glow. Isn't that perfect? Again, I thank you for all your love and support. I thank you for stopping by. And hey, if you love this and it's your first time coming by, I'd love for you to subscribe and join our family. I'm going to see you soon. Bye. Today, I have 10 new Halloween DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. All right, so the first one is going to require a little wooden block or breadboard and some stickers from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some paint and some paper, stuff like that. But this is what we're going to start with. I'm going to start by taking off the tag on the back. Be sure you take all that stuff off. And then I'm going to use kind of a coarse grit sanding paper to get around the edges. I got this little breadboard at Goodwill and it had very rough edges, kind of splintery. So I wanted to clean all that off and then, of course, afterwards, wipe all the dust away so it doesn't interfere with the rest of your product. Products sticking down like your paint and your glue and stuff like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose a sticker. I want this to go on a little coffee bar section in my house, so I chose these stickers because I thought they would be really cute. Now this is just some a little paper pad that originally comes from Target and I got it at Dollar, well not at Dollar Tree, at Dirt Cheap. I'm going to mix two paints to try to get the right color here so I'm going to take an orange and try to match that pumpkin as close as possible. I didn't quite get it, I'll just, you know, spoiler alert, but it's close enough. So I'm just mixing it up with a little wood stick in my cup here and I'm just going to start laying this on just to the top of this block. I don't completely coat the sides, but you can go ahead and do that if you want to. I'm going to be sanding a little bit more shortly, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't take too much paint away. 
All right, so we're gonna trace out how much paper we need to cover up a portion of the bottom, and we're gonna put it on with a glue stick. This used to be purple, but I've had it for some time now. Bought it on clearance a long time ago, and the purple has faded, but the adhesiveness is still good. It still works perfectly. So this is not a perfect fit, and that is not a problem. I'm gonna press from the inside outward, just like I always do. And you can see how it overhangs the edges here. And I'm just gonna take my sanding block and just sand down and away. And this is going to take the edge off, the excess off, give you a nice clean finish, just like that. Now you can go back over with your paint and finish up any part that you wanna finish. I didn't quite mix up enough, but I used what I had. All right, so I love this one because I know when I get up in the mornings, I want my coffee before anything else. And he looks so tired. So we're going to put him down here. I'm just trying to find a spot that I think looks good. And I know I want to use a couple of these stickers. So I'm going to put the little cup on here and press it down once I know that that's where I want them to be. And then I'm going to take the little bat sticker. A mm, couple of options of where it could go, but I think the top's going to be cute. And then I'm going to embellish it with a little bit of my jute cord. And wrap it around back. I'm going to start my glue on the back side so it's nice and clean in the front. A little bit of hot glue. Press that down in there. And then just wind it around the board going to overlap the paint and the paper area there. Just like that. No rhyme or reason. You can use any type of trim that you want to use or you don't have to use anything at all. You could use a pretty ribbon or colored um, cords, anything like that if you'd like. So this is a little bow I had made earlier. I uh, showed my mother how to make a bow. We were working on our bows. So I already had it and I'm going to use it right over here on the side. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the link in the description box below. Thank you. Now this is pressed down and I'm going to take that same sandpaper and just go back over and take the edge off so you can see the wood underneath. It's just going to give it the rustic look that I enjoy in my home, but you certainly can leave this part out if you would like. There you go. I'm into the cutesy Halloween stuff. How about you? The fun stuff. Okay, project number two. This sign has two sides and we're gonna use the two sides. It's got a little damage. I had done a previous project. As you can see here, I had pumpkins on there. And it's time to give it some new life. I thought maybe I could peel this off, but let me tell you something. The Mod Podge I used is really holding well. So the main part I'm going to sand is where I've torn the paper and around the edges so that it is kind of more flat and to blend in a little bit better. I'm going to just take my little chippy brush here and my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and go over this area nicely. Going to give it a pretty good coat and then let it dry. Once it is dry, we're going to use these napkins. I got these at Dirt Cheap, if you recognize the little price tag there. I think it probably came from like Dollar General or someplace like that originally, but you can find Halloween napkins anywhere, anywhere. This print was something very pretty. I like this. If you tear the paper on the edge above the little polka dot line there, um, there's like little perforations that hold it together. If you tear right above that, you can easily pull your two layers apart. So there's a little tip for you if you're having problems separating the two ply napkins and it'll come right apart. Just be careful with it. It's very, very thin. I'm going to take some matte Mod Podge, put that down on my board. I don't want to use too much, so I'm just going to use a little at a time and add where needed so that I can get my layer of napkin down without tearing it. If you get it too wet, it will tear on you. I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to carefully place it over where I think I want it. And you can see I'm just pressing down where the lines were, the folds in the napkin. 
and you do this the same way. You're just going to press down and very gently rub that from the inside outward and you'll press any bubbles that you have right on out of there. Be careful. Don't worry so much about wrinkles if you get one or two because if you start trying to lift this up, you're, it's going to be a mess. Now I'm just very gently using this little tool to help me make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to gently, gently just hold and press down and it'll help the edges come away. It's not going to give you a perfect finish yet, but that's not a concern because we are going to fix that. I strive to make all of my projects look high end, so I'm always trying to give you little tips along the way so that you can do the same. Very gently with a sanding block that has seen probably better days. I'm going to just go down and away from and I didn't I didn't let this dry yet so this is still still damp but I didn't put a lot of glue so it's not it's not too bad and then you get a nice finished look there I've gone ahead and sanded the black bottom all around the high points so that it has the kind of a rusted look and I'm gonna do the same thing to that pole that's holding it up that little stem there I'm gonna rough it up a bit and it'll be ready once we get it together. Now, Dollar Tree has these gorgeous journaling cards. All they are is there are two pieces of paper that have a bunch of different tags and um, pictures on them and I'm just gonna choose one that I like and this one I really really like the font and the shape of this. I'm gonna cut out as close as I can to the black line. Just trimming it out there. These are not stickers so you're going to have to cut if you use these. And we're going to make a little 3D sign right on top of this. I can accomplish that by using a Jenga block. This is a larger of the Jenga blocks. It's bigger than what I got uh, at Dollar Tree, but it doesn't matter. I got mine at Goodwill, but you can use the ones from Dollar Tree if that's what you have. And I like the space that it takes up so that it lifts it far away from the sign. And you'll see in a moment that it creates a lot of shadow and interest around there and I like that. So I'm going to just take my hot glue, put that down on there. Be sure that your your decoupage is dry. Make sure that everything is dry before you do this or it'll just most likely peel it straight off of there. I'm just pressing it down and this is what the first side is going to look like. You can put a bow on it. You can do anything you want to embellish it on that side if you would like. I'm going to go over to the second side for our third project. Now this one's going to be a little more playful than the other side. I'm going to just put a piece of that from the same little book, I believe. Just a little scrapbook paper, whatever you have, right over the top of the one that is there, the book page that is there. Again with the Mod Podge. Putting it on with a different brush. To get a good coverage most especially you want more on this side because that paper is heavier than the tissue paper on the other side and you want it to really get a good cling you don't want it to come apart so once i've put it exactly over my paper or close enough i'm going to press it down with my little tool here and then kind of crease the sides trim them off and then I've got these little felt pieces and they came off of a garland that I had. And these little tags, they're adhesive on the back. They came originally from Target as well. But again, I got them a dirt cheap. I'm just using this marker. Um, I wasn't sure if I would get enough coverage with this. And I actually, after I did it, was not too happy with the coverage. Maybe a couple of more coats, but eh, I didn't really it wasn't giving me what I wanted, so I went back with some Apple Barrel White acrylic paint and just painted over that. And I'm just trying to get down in all the cracks and crevices. I've put it aside to let it dry while we figure out where we want our bats to live. So I know I want them at angles, and I'm just using the paintbrush to kind of get an idea of where I want to put that tag once it is dry. I'm going to use some hot glue here on my bat. And put it down. These are felt. I don't know if I mentioned that before. 
You can get these in all different shapes and colors and designs at Dollar Tree. So if you prefer jack-o'-lanterns or skeletons, you can definitely find something like that. But I like the bats and that's what I had on hand. I still got supplies from last year I'm working through. So a little bit of hot glue on the base and we can put this back together. Okay, now that our sticker is dry, I'm gonna peel it off and get ready to place it down on the sign. Just like that. And once I get it where I want it, I just press it down and it will stick on there nicely. But you can certainly use uh, any type of sticker that you have or a stencil on this if you want to. You can use individual stickers to, to put out Happy Halloween. You can use rub-ons, whatever you got. So I've got some table scatter or some confetti here that has little bats and stars and skeletons in it. And I thought these little bats would be perfect. They have little perforations where you can bend the wings up. They're so cute. So I thought those would be nice right here on the sign and it covers up the holes. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. But it leaves a little extra something, I think. I think we could do better. So at first I thought I would use a marker to trim this out. But then I thought, you know, I've got some black ribbon. Let's just use that. And you're guaranteed to get a straight line if you're using a straight piece of ribbon, right? So I've tucked it behind the wings and the tail and just put it off with my hot glue gun. I've put it down with the hot glue gun. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Just go under the little wing, under the ears, right across the top. And then all I have to do is trim it off. And just get as close as you can to that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is crafted. So what do you think about it? Yeah, I think that's good. But he needs a little something extra on his eyes. So I'm going to give him a little silver dot in each eye. You can barely see this on camera, but I could see it in person. See the little dot? Just a tiny dot. Just to give him a little spark in his eye. On to number four. Little chubby pumpkin. I'm going to take my white chalk paint and give this a good coat. Laying it on kind of thick. And when you do that, you're going to have to give it extra dry time. Although chalk paint does dry pretty quickly. I always put my things in front of a fan that I have in the room in my craft space. Once it is dry, I'm using my glue stick. See, I'm trying to give you options between the Mod Podge and the glue sticks. You can decide what works best for you. Now, I'm deciding here which part of the napkin that I like the best, and I'm being sure not to get too close to the edge because that's where all the little polka dotted spots are where they have little holes, and I don't want that. So, I'm just going to place it down here. I like what's on here, and I'm going to smooth it out. Now this is in fast motion because I don't want to bore you with all the details but do understand that I'm doing this very gently. I'm gonna trim off some excess here and I did have a little tear in my little pumpkin's chin over there but that's easy fixed. Easily fixed. Okay same thing here it's still a little bit you know it's not completely dried yet but that's okay. I'm just sanding a little bit, very gently, and then the paper will just flake away, essentially. Now, once that is done, I'm going to pick another sign, and I like this one. Wish you a beautiful Halloween. I'm going to cut that out, leaving a white border, and I'm going to put it on here. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. I sure appreciate it, and it does help my channel. Okay, I'm going to use some of these little foam stickers. I'm going to put these on the back to give it just a little bit of height and a little dimension. You could use the little dots that you get from Dollar Tree if you like. Whatever you have. Or you can use another Jenga block and do it like that. There we go. You can put a bow on here. You can do whatever you like if you want to, you know, make it your own. To me, this is good just like this. I did try making a little bow, but nah, I like it like this. 
Easiest craft in this entire video. Number five is a simple card sign. You go to Dollar Tree, you pick one of their beautiful seasonal cards out. You're gonna glue it together, press it out so you don't have any wrinkles and everything's one nice solid piece. Get you a freestanding sign and some hot glue. Center it and press it down. This card is probably a five by seven. It may be bigger than that. So you just want to be sure you have a sign that stands. I got mine on clearance at Kirkland's a few years ago. Now look at there, another option. And this is number six. We're going to make a bat sign on the back. See, no scary stuff, no scary stuff. These little tags came from Dollar Tree, or these little wood cutouts. This came from a bottle wrapper. As you put it around like a two liter bottle or whatever. I saved it because I knew I could do something else with it. So I'm going to use some hot glue. I've chosen which one I want. The pack came with several different kinds and it did originally come from Target. But I got it where? At Dirt Cheap. Okay. So I'm just going to place this down once I get it where I want it. And then I know I'm going to put this on here somewhere. So I'm going to take some of my Harvest Orange and paint my little pumpkin. You can paint this entire thing one color if you like. You do not have to do an orange pumpkin and then different colored words. You can certainly just do the entire thing. If you got spray paint sitting around and you want to do something quick that dries quick, go outside and give it some white or some black chalk paint and you'll be good to go. This is black chalkboard paint that I'm using on my words. And I'm just trying to be sparing with this. I don't want to make a big mess and have it glopped all over the place. It takes too long to dry when you do that. So I'm using as little as possible while still getting, you know, a pretty nice coverage. All right, so once I've done that, I'm just smoothing it out to make sure I don't have any bubbles of paint that's going to take forever to dry. This is somewhat what it looks like, and when it is dry, it looks like this. Here are some options. You can use any type of a paper cutout if you would like. You can put your little sign down here and put a cutout behind it, whatever you might have. Or here are some little dots. You can get these from Dollar Tree. Anytime you use these, it's going to give you dimension because your item is not going to lay flat. It's going to stand away from the surface. I like that look. I use these types, well, this technique anyway, in lots of my projects. I'm just going to add it in the areas that you can't see through it. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to put it near a loop or something where you can see right through it. So I put it kind of hidden behind the thicker parts of this little wood cutout. Now that was me trying to get rid of some glue. Little glue webs. Okay, so I put it in the center. I'm going to press down. And I like it. I like it very much like that. Could go over it and kind of do like a little whitewash on there or a little light white distressing if you want to so that it really makes a happy Halloween stand out. But I like it and I don't mind that it's like that, you know. I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree stickers, their little wood stickers, and I'm going to color some of the bats with my furniture marker in black. It dries fairly quickly. I'm going to take those off and just add those couple of them on there, here and there. Easy peasy. Okay, now we're going to do a little haunted house block. This is some Canyon Black Satin Paint. I'm going to use a piece of little scrapbook paper. And there I have a couple of books to choose from. These stickers from Dollar Tree. And this little box that I got at Goodwill, but you can use any type of little shadow box that you get from Dollar Tree. The one that I'm using is about a six by six square. If you wanna get something similar, that's what I'm using. So I'm going to choose a paper. And since I've got bats going on a pretty good bit in this bunch of projects, I think that this would be a cute option. It is a little bit bigger than my box, so I'm going to go around with the pencil, mark it, 
and then I'm going to use my little paper cutter and trim it off. I don't have a link for the exact paper cutter, but I will try to get you a link to something similar if you like the pendulum type paper cutter. I'm very happy with mine. Okay, using that glue stick, I'm going all over the flat back part of this little box. And I'm going to put my paper down. This is like a cardstock. It's kind of, um, it's thicker than regular paper. You know, you know, craft paper. So I'm going to press it down nice and flat and it fits fairly well on there. My sticker pack did not come with a moon and I really want a moon on my scenery. So I'm just going to take some of these Dollar General stickers that I got for like 90% off one year and I've had them forever. I'm going to use those by painting them and then putting them by the fan so they can dry. And while that's happening, I'm going around the edges and roughing up the edges. It's just more of a rustic look and it is going to kind of burnish that down for the next step. All right, I'm taking an artist pencil, but you can use any pencil that you want. And I'm just laying the side of the pencil lid down to give some shadowing on here. Now, I'm gonna give the credit of this to Trish from Crafting Cousins because she did this on one of her projects and she said she always does it on a certain type of project. And I thought, you know what? That would be really good pretty much on anything. So, I've taken her little tip, I'm giving her credit for it, and just going around the edges to give this an older, more aged, and rustic look. Gives it kind of a spooky look on the edges, if that's even a thing. It is now. That's a spooky look. We're going to call that a spooky look. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take my little glittery haunted mansion, and I'm going to put it down. I'm not sticking it all the way down till I know where I want it. Got a little witch that's glittery. I'm going to put her up there in the top in the sky. I know I want her in the sky. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to press those down. And they have the little foam stickers on the back too, so they stand up just a little. Gotta have more bats, right? You can never have too many bats. So I'm going to color some more, again with that same furniture marker. It took me several days to do all these projects, y'all, but I had a blast. I had my scary podcast going and the music sometimes, and I was just, I was having myself a blast. Now, it looks like there was an explosion in my craft room right now, but hey, I had fun, and I've got so much more to show you. I cannot wait to show you more. Okay, so the same little technique, going around the edges of that moon after it's nice and dry with the pencil and then just kind of rubbing that edges out to kind of give it a, a dirty aged look, I guess. Oh, I love it. I love the way this looks. Thank you, Trish, for the idea. Okay, so far so good. Now we want to put our little bats in flight up there. And I like them hanging over the edges like that. But you know what? It's missing something. Why don't we put a jack-o'-lantern in there? And I think I'll do white. And I'm just going to take some white chalk paint and quickly go over this. I'm kind of using a dry brush. I'm not, I'm not putting a heavy amount there. Let it dry. And then once it's dry, I'm going to start shading it with a pencil as well. I'm going to shade where it might would have its little stalk naturally growing, its little vine top. I'm just lightly coloring in a little bit there and I'll take my thumb and just rub it into that chalk paint and it will just smear so nicely and gives it such a nice little shadow. I'm going to go around in the eyes just a little bit, darken those up and yeah I made a boo-boo there but that's okay because I'm going to put some ribs on the pumpkin so it won't even matter. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to blend those in a little bit. Isn't he cute? Oh my goodness, he's cute. Okay, so we're going to put him down here. It already has one sticker, but I'm going to add one more right on top of it so that it really stands out because the pumpkin is so much bigger. Uh, it's not in proportion, so we want it to look like 
it's standing out further than the castle. Like you're gonna pass it going down the road before you even get to that castle or that mansion, whichever way you wanna call it. So actually I have three layers. It's really standing out there. Love that. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next project. We're going to use some of these little felt banner pieces. I've got some ribbons, two different colored fabrics, and two of these monogram pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. You can see here, doesn't matter which letter you get because it's gonna be covered up. Tear off your bows. And I'm gonna show you how you can separate this. This is my little metal ruler that I got from Dollar Tree and I use this thing for so many things. If you slip this underneath there, you can gently pry apart the two layers. So you're gonna pull upward a little bit, go around the edges because it's only held there by glue. There are no nails. You can see the glue there. And we're gonna do the back pumpkin gonna have two projects one with each pumpkin okay so you can see there's some weird damage over there on the left side of that pumpkin I don't know what that was but I bought it that way because I knew it wouldn't matter I'm going to use my Mod Podge give this a good 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 thick coat all over this pumpkin even on those little edges and around the stem and then I'm going to lay down my fabric now you can get fabric at Dollar Tree. You can get fabric at Walmart. You can use an old shirt. You can use an old dress, maybe from one of your children. You can use any type of fabric you want. A napkin, you know, like a cloth napkin. Mine did come from Goodwill. And then I'm gonna put on a thick layer of this Mod Podge. The reason we're still in this in the thick layer of Mod Podge is because it will get hard and it's gonna be so much easier to cut and to sand. I tried to sand down that S and it was a disaster, so I don't recommend that. Um, go over it instead with some white chalk paint. And that's what I've done here. It's thicker than regular acrylic paint. You might could use spray paint if you wanted to, but you're gonna put a good thick coat on there and then make sure that it dries thoroughly. While that is drying, we're gonna go on to the next pumpkin. We're gonna mix two different color paints here to try to match the color of the pumpkin that we have. I didn't do a perfect job with this, but close enough. I just felt like I needed to cover up those spots that are down there on that pumpkin. You don't have to do this because you're gonna be covering it back up, but I did have a little bit of, um, that was peeking out from underneath where that second layer was gonna go, and I did not want that to show, so. Um, just go ahead and do this, but you can skip this part if you didn't tear yours like I tore mine. So for the center section, we're going to use the black fabric. Just going to cut off only what I need so I can save the rest of the fabric for another project. And we're going to put this down with a little bit of hot glue. Protecting our fingers first, of course. You're going to put the hot glue around the edges and then fold it over. I'm going to do this all the way around the sides first and then around the curves in the top. And then that top is finished off and then around the bottom. Now I'm going to take the little ghost that I've picked here and some of these will easily come off. So I'm just kind of removing the black eyes and the face because it looked like a scary face and that's not what I'm going for in my projects. So it did take a whole day for this to dry, but once it's dry, you can just easily take your scissors and cut it like paper. Look how easy this comes off. Or you can use your little cutting knife, whatever you choose. But it is so thick and strong now that this heavy grit paper is filing it off like it's regular paper. Perfect, I love it. Now I'm gonna add back the center section. You can a little bit still see that S under there, but it's not that big of a deal and it's gonna be covered. So you could use a second paint and let that, a second coat of paint and let that dry if you'd like, but I'm good with this. We're gonna have a little bat right on top and you won't even be able to see. Don't worry about the holes, we're gonna fix that. 
So I'm just going to put my little felt bat at an angle here. And then I'm going to glue around his little ears and the top of his head, any place that may be trying to come away. And go ahead and secure those down. Just put the tiniest little dots under there. I love my glue gun. So I'm going to use this glass writer, which I use for so many things that are not glass and that is wonderful. It came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to fill in the holes where the ribbon went through for the banner when it was a little garland. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this silver to just give him some little eyes. I don't want him to have big white eyes, just a little hint of an eye. Wow, I sounded like Bob Ross, didn't I? Okay, so there we go. You can see his little eyes. And we're going to put this other pumpkin back together. He's going to be our ghost pumpkin. Going to go over here. Excuse my head. And we're going to put this little ghost down on here. Hot glue. Fix him right to the center. Just like that. Pressing it down. Now, we're, we've got to give him a face, though, right? He needs a friendly face, just like the little bat. So, I'm just going to make a smile. I'm going to use the original holes from the hanger as his eyes. And I'm going to draw him a little a U-shaped smile with the little dash right beside it. Now, he's happy like the bat. Okay, I think to make them even cuter, we're going to put some messy bows on top. What do y'all think? Go ahead and use any type of bow you have. I'm going to just run through this little messy bow. These are six inch pieces that I'm using of different types of ribbon. None of them have wire. They don't need wire, so this is perfect if you have unwired thin ribbons laying around for maybe other projects. You can just stack those together. I'm going to make the first bow to coordinate with the pumpkin, and then we'll make a different color to go with the other pumpkin. So this is for the orange bat. I mean, not the bat. Oh my goodness. The orange pumpkin is going to look like this. I'm just going to tie it with another piece of the black ribbon. And then that way we don't even have to cut that off. It will be incorporated into the bow. So I'm just going to try to get close to my center. Tie that tightly in a double knot. And then that's what kind of what our bow is going to look like. You can go ahead and either dovetail your ends if that's the look that you like. You can cut them at a slant. You can leave them straight across. You can make little points. Do whatever you want to do on this. But I love doing it this way. And then the thin ribbons don't need any type of uh, trimming on them except trying to make them even, which is what I've done here. Folded them in the center, gathered them up, and just trimmed off the edge. And then this is what we have. I love adding that little jute in there. Just gives it a little more of a rustic look, and I'm all about that rustic life. All right, now see, isn't that cute? That's gonna look perfect. I used ribbons I already had, but the little checked ribbon is a ribbon that I got this year from Dollar Tree. Love that. It's a dark orange and it matches the pumpkin. Now the orange on this pumpkin is a little bit brighter, so we're gonna change it up a bit. I'm gonna use a brighter ribbon, and then I'm going to take some of the orange, some of the black, and some of the white, and then of course, we're gonna use a little more of the jute that we used in the other one. I'm gonna cut those in pieces, layer them up. Doesn't really matter how you put these together, I just like to alternate. And then the three pieces of the jute on top, I'm gonna take a little orange scrap that I already had. We're going to double knot that. We're going to fold it over, grab our edges, trim them off, and then there you go. Right above that second layer, I'm going to add the bow on here. And glue my finger down, apparently. That's why you should be protecting your fingers, and I didn't do it this time. Shame on me. Okay, so there we go. Cute. All right, this has got to be my favorite project. This is number 10, and if you're still here, please leave me a jack-o'-lantern. This thing is so cute. All right, so I'm gonna use the thrifted 
little stand, I'm going to use some spray paint to give it a good coat of paint. I'm going to use some of these vase filler pieces from Dollar Tree. You can get raffia at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a couple of different colors. I'm going to use some scrap pieces of floral foam and I'm going to use some of those wire cutters. I'm going to stuff the inside of my little cauldron and you can get these at Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to stuff it with some scrap pieces of floral foam. This is just to fill it up so we have something to set our piece of paper on the top. I've taken a piece of paper, filled it straight in the top. It goes right down that lip and sits on top of the foam. Now we're going to start making the insides of whatever it is this witch has cooked up. So we're going to use black and orange bubbles. You can use any color you want, but I like black and orange and white. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to add dots of glue and put these down. You try to use a cool temp if you have a cool temp uh, on your glue gun. Mine has two different temperatures because these are foam and they can melt. So just be very careful. And you see I, that one stuck to my finger protector and came right off. Look at that. What a mess. You're going to keep adding. I'm just kind of going around and looking at the size of the holes and the shape and the color and just adding in where I need to add in. As you can see there, I'm adding in little ones and big ones, just going around and around the top until the top is completely finished. You could definitely use, leave those little glue strings on there if you wanted to. Might give it a little extra creepy look. So there's the top of it so far. Here is our dried painted base. Love it. Very cute. Now we're going to use a wood circle to be the base of what we're doing next. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this um, straw and I'm going to almost like roll it into a nest because this is going to be like the base of our fire. We're going to have a fire because we've got to have we got to have something cooking in that pot, right? Got to have it cooking in that cauldron. So I'm going to take some glue, take that spool that I have wound up there, place it down, and then I'm going to cut around it. This is easier for me to do it this way. You could certainly just go ahead and put that straight on the top of the, the little um, base riser that we have, but I didn't want to quite do it that way. I don't know why this particular raffia has knots in it, just work around it. Now you're going to take this and wrap it around your four fingers. Just wrap it around there a whole bunch of times. Slide it off. And then you're going to cut it. And when you cut it, you've got two different sides here. Just like this. And this is going to be like a fire. Nice. So now you got to tie it together and get you another piece of that. Raffia. I should have done that before I cut it, but I didn't. Just to show you it can be done, go ahead and tie it in the middle so that nothing comes apart. Now, the darker the color, the closer to the bottom of the fire it should be, right? If you've ever looked at flames, that's kind of how it looks. I'm going to put my red on the bottom. This is like a dark orange, actually. I'm going to just glue it right in the center. It kind of looks like flames coming up, right? Now this is what I should have done the first time. Wrap it around your hand, get your loops, get another piece, tie it. Then you're gonna put your thumb on the knot, pull it up, cut it. Now you've got your orange layer. You can just trim that down however you wanna trim it and put it across and inside the darker color one. Needs to be a little shorter, trim it up. Easy, easy. I'm gonna put some glue there and just put it across or on top of the darker color there. It's almost like an X, but it doesn't matter. You can do it however you want, but it will keep it from being too bulky in the center. I'm pressing down really, really hard there to make sure that that glue goes all the way through to the base. Now we're ready to set the cauldron down. It's perfectly down in there. So now we can go ahead and put it on the top of our little pedestal. Okay, now how's that? Pretty cool. 
It's so cute. I love this. Okay, so now I'm going to take my glue gun and start putting bubbles over the side. So it is bubbling down into the fire. You might want to use the smaller bubbles as you go down, but you don't have to. You can do this any way that you want to. I'm going to go back in and add things to the top, add things around the side. I'm just tilting it here so that you can see a little bit better what it is that I am doing. I could have cut all this out in editing, but I know some people need to see the details, so I'm just showing you how I kind of twist these and turn them and how I add these in. Be sure that you kind of alternate your colors. You can use some orange, you can use some black. It's going to give it some depth and some interest. And I'm just going all the way down and even onto the base there. So it is bubbled out and is spilled onto the base. You can also, if you run out of the small ones like I did, you can take some of the larger ones and just cut them with scissors and just glue that foam part straight down. And I think I left a part of that in there to show you how I do it. Let's see, do I? I think I do. So here I'm just cutting and then you can just put that down and it gives it a little bit of a smaller bubble. Just like that. So you want to continue on. If you have enough and you want to go all the way down, you certainly can. But I wanted to stop right here on the base. Oh my gosh, I love this. But if we've got bubbles, we need smoke, right? So to signify steam or smoke or a witchy spell coming out of here, I'm going to make some curls out of one piece of my pipe cleaners. You can see I just made little twists around a piece of stick that I have there and I'm just going to poke these down in the empty spots. Oh, how cute! Would you have put those in there or left them out? I think it looks cute. I think it looks like steam coming out. Okay, so those are 10 brand new projects for you and I've kind of mixed them in my new backdrop here for Halloween. Tell me, which ones of these do you plan on making? Do you have the supplies already in your house to make some of these? I know some of these were from fall items and some of these were thrifted. I hope that you do try some of these. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. Thanks to the ones of you who keep coming back to see my videos and making sweet comments. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye. Today I have three Halloween DIYs with candy corn theme. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. So, for project number one, we have a candy corn pumpkin wreath. We're going to start with the wreath form that comes from... Dollar Tree, but I believe you can get it other places. This is the one that's dimensional. It's not flat We're gonna take some picks and my choice is going to be black and orange And I think I add some yellow later to match the candy corn Little burlap leaf came from Dollar Tree the little wispy piece came from Dollar Tree and this fabric came from Dollar Tree Can you believe it? And it's the perfect size for this form. All right, so we're gonna start by covering our form with this black fabric. Of course, we wanna remove our tag and then watch how perfectly this piece of fabric fits with this form. I could not believe it when I tried it. Yes. So you can pick any color of that seasonal fabric that you can find at Dollar Tree or you can use the solid felt fabric, whatever you can find. You can even use an old shirt, an old skirt, an old blanket or sheet, whatever you like. So I'm just clipping this and then flipping it over so I can see where I'm going to be needing my glue. I don't have um, 
arms like an octopus, which would be ideal for this because I could hold everything at one time while I'm gluing, but since I can't, these clips work great and they came from Dollar Tree. They got little silicone tips on them, so they grip really nicely for these projects. All I'm doing is going around the edge and just kind of laying it out where I know I want it to be. Just like this. And then we'll trim off that excess in a bit. But for now, I'm just going to put it where I know I want it to be. And then we're going to work with one section at a time. So I'm going to unclip the section on the side first using my cool temperature setting on my gun because you do not want this to run off of that wire. If you use a high temp, it's going to fall off the wire. We don't want that to happen. We need a little time to be able to adjust that fabric to fold it over the edge. So you having that cooler temperature glue is going to work better for that. Then I'm going to go to the other side and then attach that side down. See how that bead sits right on top? That's perfect. That's what we want. I'm not going to stretch it too hard because if you stretch too hard, these uh, frames will bend and I don't want to change the shape of this pumpkin. So I'm just going to follow the natural form and wrap around the edges. I'm going to continue to do that all the way around this pumpkin. I'm going to do a little bit at a time. So I've done both sides. Now I'm going to go to the bottom. And you get the idea here folding it over, squeezing it down so that the glue goes on both pieces of fabric and on the wire form. So we're going to continue around like this. I wanted to let y'all know guys, this is a little hidden giveaway. I'm having a 5,000 subscriber giveaway, so if you haven't subscribed, be sure that you do that. I'll be giving you more details later on that, but I can tell you that the giveaway is going to be a box full of goodies. Things that I have thrifted for crafting, things that I've picked up from Dollar Tree, extras, um, there'll be ribbons, probably transfers in there, maybe fabric, tools, paints, all kinds of things. So when we get to 5,000 subscribers, we're going to have a giveaway. Stay tuned so you'll know what to do. Okay, so when we get up to the stem and we've gotten everything else glued down, I'm just going to clip there around the stem so that I can trim off everything and still have a little bit on the top to work with. We're going to do that in just a second. Sharp scissors really do help. I've heard that you can sharpen your scissors by cutting on a piece of sandpaper or cutting on aluminum foil. Now, do your own investigating to see. I don't want anybody to ruin their good scissors, but I have used it on sandpaper before on my scissors and it works great. So try that at your own risk. All right, so just around the top here, now I have this little flap for the top of my pumpkin. It isn't the perfect fit, but it'll work for what I need. I'm just gonna fold it over. You can see I'm a little bit out of camera range and I apologize for that. I think I've gotten much better. If you've watched my videos from the beginning, I've gotten much better about trying to stay where you can see me. But you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, things happen. All right, now well, there's a bunch of different types of ribbons that you can use. Whatever you wanna use to trim yours out, you can. I just tried a few different types. I like this particular ribbon because it's wide enough that I can put glue on it and put it right down the center of those wire pieces without any glue coming out the sides. If you use a very thin strip, you might have an issue with glue um, seeping through. And I'm, I'm always striving to make a high-end look, and I want to show you how to do um, those little extra things to give you a high-end look. So we're going to stop, start at the top, right beside the stem on that first ring, and you can almost see through the fabric here, so you can see it. Um, and you just want to lay that down and add a little bit of glue as you go. You don't have to put a whole string of glue there unless you just want. I found that with the cooler temperatures, when you put a dot and then pull down to another dot, you pretty much get a little stream anyway. It's just like a little string, but it's plenty to hold that ribbon in place. Then nothing will show through. There'll be no bulk from the glue underneath and you'll get a nice smooth appearance. And that's what we want. So we're gonna go down just like this going to flip it over, add some glue on the underneath section, and then press it down. And then trim off right there. So the ends are on the back side, and it's nice and smooth. Let me show you again. 
going to start here, a little bit of glue, press it down and squeeze it to the back. Some of the glue goes to the back of the form. You can see little little string, little spider web of glue between the dots and that's perfect for this. Going to add some glue here, flip it over, a little dot of glue on the back, squeeze it down and trim it off. Be sure you use those clamps when you need them. All right, this is it when it's completely finished on the base of the pumpkin. Now we're gonna use a little bit of this burlap. Use whatever you have. This really doesn't show too much in the end with the design that I use, but whatever you decide you wanna use, you could wrap with ribbon or burlap or jute um, or leave it just like it is, whichever way you wanna do it. But I like this black burlap, so I'm gonna add this to the top. And it's this particular burlap, I'm just going to be honest, I can't remember where I got it from, but it is ridiculous to work with. It is really, it's, it's, I can't, I can't. So it's best that I use it up, right? Why not use it on a place where it really doesn't show that much? It frays, it comes apart, and it has that white backing. Um, I just, I can't. Anywho, moving along. So now we're going to make a little swag for the top. And here we have this nice and glittery pick from Dollar Tree. I think it's called Willow, I'm not sure, but they have these in a couple of different colors this year. And I'm gonna take my thrifted oak picks and just lay those around to see where I want them to be. And you can see that I've left an open spot in the middle and then we have similar sides. I'm gonna say similar, they're definitely not identical and I'm not trying to make them identical. Using a black zip tie, which also came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cinch those down really tightly. I do, by the way, glue that leaf back on and decide where I want to put it. Look at this. Ugh, the fallout. It's horrific. Ah! Okay. Now, you've seen me make this. If you've seen uh, my last, let's see, which video did I do where I made all these little things? Oh, yes. It was a Halloween, vintage Halloween video. I'm going to take this and wrap it 20 times around my hand. These are pieces of raffia, a black. If I'd had a white, I would have added that in there, but I did not have any white. I'm not even sure they make white. Tie it in the center right here with some jute and a double knot. Trim it off. I'm going to press it down so that I can see where the center would be, and I'm going to cut right through that center there. This is similar to what you would do with making a tassel, but we're not going to make a tassel. This is going to almost be like a flower or a little pile of hay or straw. It's just really cute looking to me and it looks rustic and it reminds me of, I think I've said it before, but it just reminds me of something carnival-like. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna wrap that around. It's convenient to have that jute long enough that you can use it to tie. And I don't cut that stuff off until the end, that way I can use it if I need to. I'm gonna fluff it out a little bit. It's a nice little filler. I think it gives some great color there amongst all the black. Okay, now I'm gonna take this burlap leaf. I think this is a maple leaf. Really doesn't matter. It's orange and it looks good here. It's gonna break up some of that black. I'm gonna press it in with that long little wire piece on the back and then just kind of fluff that other stuff over the top. I've got a variety of gold and yellow flowers here. I also have an orange flower that you'll see in a second. These two branches are thrifted and they are identical. So I'm going to pull the same branch off with a, some, hmm, the same little pick part off of each branch. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they're identical. And I'm going to put one on each side. And then fluff it around a little bit to get it where I want it. Um, I didn't have to use glue because this fits right down in the other stems from the other picks, which makes it great. But feel free if you're going to hang it outside where it might get some wind and weather that you would, you know, go ahead and use a little hot glue there. But I don't need it for that because it's going to be indoors. Look at this beautiful orange thrifted flower. Love it. Rather than shoving that down in that pick, which is already pretty tight, I'm just going to use a little hot glue on the back. And this is still my cool temp. I'm enjoying using the cool temp actually. And then I'm going to put my flower right down in there. I'm just going to press it down for a minute until that glue has a chance to sit up. 
So now we have a beautiful floral spray for the top of our pumpkin. Love it. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Okay, so I'm going to take that jute. I'm going to wrap it around that wire frame and then tie it off. Just like that. Trim it down and then a little hot glue to keep that knot from slipping. Once it's cool, you can flip it over so you don't glue it to your table. And I need a hanger. So right in the top, there's a piece of the wire that is still um, easy to expose underneath the burlap. So I just press it down a little bit and then wrap a piece of that coordinating ribbon, the same ribbon, to make a hanger. Just like that. And I'm going to cut this at a slant because I want the knot to be at the top. I like, I like the look of that. So that's what we got so far. But we have one more thing we're going to add. But you can stop there if you'd like. Okay. So the icing on the cake. Dollar Tree has these cute little signs. I was lucky enough to get two packs. And they're different. The signs are shaped differently. It's going to fit nicely on the sign, I think. So I'm going to just take my little tie here, go right underneath my swag, and then attach it down, and then trim it off. It's hanging from a wire, so you really could adjust that up to make it shorter or down to make it longer. But I love the look of this. What do you think? Okay. Now, number two, candy corn pumpkin sign. I am going to be featuring some of Plaid's products. I am glad to say that I am an ambassador for Plaid and they sent me a bunch of goodies. Three paints here are the candy corn colors I have chosen. And then a pack of brushes. This came from them as well. This is a sign that I printed off a few years ago, believe it or not. I hung on to it because I like the font. And then this pumpkin that came from Dollar Tree. But we're gonna use the back. All right, I'm gonna put some paper towels down here to just protect my surface and cut the hanger off of my pumpkin. I'm gonna start with a flat brush. I love painting with these brushes. They're so soft and it gives such a nice stroke. Really like these. Thank you, Plaid. I appreciate so much all the wonderful goodies I got. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this beautiful yellow. I'm gonna put this on the bottom. And this is almost gonna be like an ombre effect. Um, I'm still working on my technique, so forgive me. This is for inspiration, guys. This is definitely not gonna be perfect. And you'll see what I mean in a, in a bit. So if you're somebody who crafts and then you get disappointed in yourself because it doesn't turn out quite like you wanted it to, oh, just watch what happens to me and be inspired that you know, we can always try harder and we can learn from our mistakes. Next, we're going to take this beautiful orange. I believe this is pumpkin orange or harvest orange. It's gorgeous, though. I'll put the colors uh, in the description box for you. All right, so the same brush with the yellow on it. I'm just going to go up and start blending a little bit of that orange into the yellow. You can see it's kind of smeary looking. Okay, so this is where it goes wrong. I put the white on and forget to change brushes. Now, with white paint, it's, mm, I should have just used a different brush because now I have a mess. And I will tell you that I had to keep adding it. Then I had to let it dry and add two more coats just to get the white right. Mm -hmm. And my line is not straight. And it doesn't matter that much until you get ready to put words. Ugh! Then it's a mess. So we're gonna let that disaster dry. And we're gonna go on to our light up scarecrow box. We're gonna take this little sign from Dollar Tree. It's a triangle. Any type of little chipboard or wooden or whatever embellishment that you have, any type of little guys. And then a napkin. This is just a paper napkin. I'm gonna take this tag off the back because it's, well, it doesn't look good there and we're not many pearls. So we're gonna take that right off. Sometimes they come off easily, sometimes they do not. Just gonna do the best I can with this. The struggle is real. With these signs, you can press the back right out. Just like that. And sometimes, just like today, it'll peel off nicely. 
Sometimes it will not. If it doesn't, slap some chalk paint on it, put it underneath the dryer, and call it a day. But look at that. Perfection. Love it. All right, then be sure you clean up your frame as well because we want a nice, clean form to work with. That stuff will come off of there pretty easy. If not, just go ahead and get you a emery board or a sanding block and just smooth that down. All right, so I know that I'm going to use this napkin on here, and I want to show you what you can do to separate your layers because I know for a lot of people, they don't, they say they can't get their two layers apart. If you tear above those little dots, if you notice the napkins have little dots on them, tear just above it, then your layers will come apart. Those little dots actually hold those layers together. So carefully, carefully, so you see there, you can get that to come apart and then very carefully go around and pull those areas loose. And then you have a one ply piece to work with. And that's easier. If you use two plies, in my opinion, that's when you're gonna get the wrinkles. Okay, another plaid product. I'm gonna put a little Mod Podge in the little cup beside me, but you can certainly use, just put it right down on top of your project. The reason I did it this way, and I'm using a new brush, is that I wanna get a nice, even light coat. I don't wanna to put too much on there and then not be able to take it off. So just using a little cup will help me get that light light coat on there. I want a light coat because I have some things that I want to do with this project quickly so that you guys can see it. But you can use a heavier coat if that's what you like. I'm just using my hands to press the wrinkles out of the napkin now. There's, there's some lines, some fold lines in there that we want to take out. So I'm just kind of gently pressing that out. I've learned how much pressure I can use with these napkins and with tissue paper. You have to kind of learn those. So I'm going to line these up. I don't want my dots the napkin dots as we discussed to show. So I'm just gonna put it down where it's centered. This little tool here, I'm gonna gently, gently, gently use this little rubber tool to press out my wrinkles and lines. Now, this is a faster speed. You would not do it this fast normally. Um, you might tear something, so you don't wanna do that. But go ahead and get that nice and neat, work from the center outward so you can get all, you can press all those wrinkles and any other problems out to the edge. Now because I used a light layer of that Mod Podge, I can gently tear away my edges without worrying about my paper coming apart or sliding off. I'm just going to, where I have pressed down on the edges, I'm just going to gently pull that paper away. I'm not trying to tear it, I'm just kind of pulling off where it will give naturally. Then I'm pressing my edges back down to make sure nothing comes loose. Just pressing those down. Then I'm going to take my sanding block, which is a nice foam block that comes from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use that to just shear that off on the edges. Gently, downward and away. So there we go. You can see how we're doing that. All the way down. You're just going to follow your line all the way down. And there you go. Nice finished edge. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as part of my family. Our YouTube channel is growing. Okay, so we're going to put the backing back on our triangle. Just like so. A little bit of glue comes out. Not a problem. We're going to press it down and just it'll just kind of ball up and roll off. Get that stuff off of there. You don't want that showing in your final project. We want a high-end look. So I've chosen the Scarecrow. I think when I saw the Scarecrow, I actually thought, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'll show you the little theme with the Scarecrow. Now, I don't like everything laying flat. You know that if you've watched my videos. I, I just like a little dimension. It's just more interesting in my opinion. I'm going to use some of these little, I don't know if they're like cardboard or what, but they came from Dar Target originally. I happen to have gotten mine from Dirt Cheap. And you can just, I'm kind of getting an idea how I want this to be because I want this to look like a pumpkin patch. If you want to show me some love, do you know you can buy me a coffee? See the link in the description box below. Thank you. All right, I've got some of this, I think this is called creepy cloth that you get at Dollar Tree. And I've just kind of made a mess of it and I'm cutting it off and I'm going to use it on the bottom sort of like straw or like 
you know, when you've been in a field and everything's been harvested and you've got all that extra stuff out there, well, that's how we want this to look. And it's a little creepy. You know, creepy cloth. Now we need to decide where the scarecrow is going to go. I think I like him there. But there needs to be a little more something. So we're going to put this pumpkin flat down. I'm going to put hot glue on it. That's what you're not seeing. And I'm going to place it down, pressing it down a little bit into that little, our little air quote hay on the bottom. I'm going to layer my cute little scarecrow on that. I'm going to put two of those blocks together and then glue them down so they're up even higher toward the front. I'm going to put a pumpkin, the little hot glue, right there. So you can see my scarecrow is already hiding in the pumpkin patch. Just like that. Then I'm going to take a pumpkin on the outside of the box right here, making sure that he doesn't hang down to interfere with it standing up. So be sure that you got your edges correct. And then a little hot glue here for another orange pumpkin. And look at all that depth and dimension. Is that not the cutest? But wait, it gets even better. We're going to put a light in there. That's right. We're going to put a light down there. Okay, so the problem I had was this little candle light from Dollar Tree is a little bit thick. And it doesn't want to go in there. But there was a happy accident, as you can see right there. It came apart. It's actually almost flat without that top case. And it still works. So check this out. Uh-huh. What about that? That's cute, isn't it? Oh, I love it. I did one for Christmas, like a light-up Christmas box that turned out so cute. Okay, so now we're back to our dried pumpkin. I'm going to go around the edges of this pumpkin and between the layers of paint with my little sanding block. I want to rough it up just a little bit, and obviously the paint job is not perfect, so I want it to almost look like it was intentionally done that way. I'm working hard to make this thing work. I'm really working hard. I didn't want to scrap it, though, because I knew it would turn out nice, and I want it to be for inspiration for you. So, again, not perfect, but hey, we're going to go with it. So, I'm going to use some carbon paper. I got this at the thrift store. I'm going to cut a piece of it to fit on the back and then tape it down. This way it won't slide all over the place and I'll get it exactly where I need it on the words. Okay. I haven't used carbon paper since I was a child, so let's see how this works. I'm going to place it over the pumpkin and try to find what I think would be the center of the pumpkin. You can certainly measure or cut that top paper down if you, you know, use a printable that is large like this. And by the way, if you go over to my Pinterest at Making It My Own One, you can find lots of free printables. So click on the free printables, and I put a lot of things there that you can look at. Um, they're not my printables. They belong to other people. I've just made a board to make it easier for you guys. So you can go over there and choose something and print it out so you can make your own. Now, I'm tracing over every bit of this. I'm going to do all of the little swirly designs, the lines under it, and all of the words on here. I'm trying not to press down too hard. Okay, there we go. How's that? Turned out pretty good. I think that's a really good transfer, especially for it being my first time in a very long time. But you see the problem here? Trick or treat is centered, but my lines between the paint are not. So we're going to go with this imperfection. We're just, we're just going to go with it. It's driving me nuts, but we're going to go with it. Now you're just going to take some type of a paint pen or maybe even a Sharpie, whatever you choose. These are acrylic paints, so they're fairly easy to go over. Um, they don't eat away the paint, sort of like if you use chalk paint. If you've ever done that and tried to use a paint pen, sometimes you have to keep tapping it to get the, the uh, paint to come down. This is not a problem with these acrylic paints. So I'm just going to trace over with my paint pen, and I have the, well, they're paint markers. I have a thin and a thick, and I'm just going to use them accordingly. I'm going to first outline my letters before I paint them. I'm trying to use a level, even hand here, and you want to be sure that you're not dragging your hand through where you're painting. So just turn your pumpkin whichever way you need to, to keep your hands and your wrist out of those areas. 
So now I'm just going to color in all of my text, just like this. I cannot remember where I got this printable originally, so I'm, I'm sorry about that, but you can find something that's comparable. Okay, so it's driving me nuts here, but you know, okay. I'll try not to obsess. We're gonna go over those little holes there, which I should have done in the beginning, but I forgot. And we're just going to put a little bit of that drywall putty in there and then using my silicone, I'm just smoothing it off. It'll dry and uh, it'll be fine. You won't be able to notice it very much. But so this is kind of crooked. So this is what I do. Uh, I go in there and try to fix it. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but I thought, oh, well, maybe I can fix this. But no, because you know why? All of those letters are in the way. So I'd have to go in there and try to go between all of the letters. And then I just thought, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm not even going to be bothered by it. <laughs> so to distract from my errors, I'm going to make a very pretty little bow to go on the top. I've chosen three different coordinating ribbons, and I'm going to use four stacks of those. They are five inches, and I'm going to make a little messy bow. You can see what I'm doing right here. I am just crisscrossing. When you have an odd number, it's easy to just stagger these out. If you have an even number, it's a little different, but whatever, you know. If you're not obsessive about patterns like I am, then you won't have to worry about that. <laughs> Some things just bug me. Okay, so I'm going to use a ribbon to tie the center. Just like this. I'm pulling and adjusting to make sure that I have pretty much the right length so that I don't have to do too much trimming in the end. Just making sure they're in the center. And then I'm going to slowly pull that knot. I don't want my ribbons to line back up again. I want them to to stay in that X pattern. So little double knots here, then you can go through with your scissors and trim the edges if you would like. You can dovetail if you want to. You can cut them at a slant if you want to. Whatever you want to use. Hey, if you want to use these, you got a good quality ribbon and they're not gonna fray, you can use them just exactly how you cut them originally. And you can skip this step. But for me, I'm gonna cut them at a slant. All right, we're going to use that same ribbon, flip it over, tie it, just like that. And by the way, you can use any pumpkin form you find at Dollar Tree, or wherever else for that matter. Anything will work. A little hot glue to make sure that doesn't slip up that stem, because it'll fall if it does. And then I'm just going to try to sand over here, sand over my words to make them blend a little bit better. And I think I did somewhat fix my line there, somewhat. But I'm going to go back over everything, kind of dull out that black. It's a little too dark there. See, I'm sanding in between, trying to ombre out my little colors, kind of smear them into one another. And originally I was going to put this on a backing, but I decided against it. Okay, so here's the reveal. I'll be getting some new backdrops soon. A company is sending me four new backdrops, so I'll be asking your opinions on those too when I try those out. I'm so excited. So here are our three projects. Here's our beautiful candy corn pumpkin. And then we have our little scarecrow light up pumpkin patch. Cutie cutie. And then here is the little sign. You can lean the sign or if you want to make a hanger with it, you can certainly do that that says trick or treat. What about that? There's a light up jar in the back. I did a project on that. That was fun. Which one of these will you be trying? I'm having so much fun with Halloween. Are you doing your Halloween projects now? We're not gonna have very many more of these Halloween videos before we'll be moving on to fall. Once again, I'm so happy that you stopped by my channel, that you leave me love and support, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye. Today, I have six fall to Halloween transitional decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Today is part of a quick change collaboration with Teresa B. DIY and two wonderful sets of co-hosts. We're gonna start off with some scrap ribbon. 
These are just pieces I had left over from last year and some from this year. I'm going to use some fastener dots or some Velcro pieces. I have some thrifted, this is like burlap with lace on the other side. I think it's a table runner. And then I got this from the thrift store as well, but it originally looks like came from Target. You can use any pumpkin form you want for this, especially if it has little cutout eyes. So I'm just going to lay it down here. I'm going to cut off some excess to make it a little more manageable. Then what you won't see is me chasing it, tracing it out with a marker and then just trimming it down as close as I can to the form. Voila, there we go. I want my burlap side to show through his eyes and the alternate side is going to be this pretty lace. So I'm going to protect my fingers, go around with my glue gun excuse my face in the picture here we're gonna go all the way around and I'm just gonna do it on the edges because I don't want any bubbles wrinkles problems of any sort and this seems to be the easiest way to do it just around the edge attaching it down if you have any extras just go ahead with your scissors and trim it and make it look very neat we always strive for a high-end look so let's clean it up where we can so now we have two sides one side is going to be for Halloween and we're going to use these little velcro dots be sure you clean your surface just like it says i found that alcohol and a paper towel work great for this you can go ahead and take your two dots i always like to put the prickly part of my velcro downward just so i remember where they are and that's going to be important in some crafts that we're going to do shortly so just keep that in mind i'm going to go ahead and put those together and just press them down on the stem of that pumpkin they are adhesive. You don't necessarily have to, to use the uh, glue, but if you use a heavy bow or a larger bow, it's going to pull down and it may take it off of your surface. So just for a little extra safety there. Now I'm going to show you this fairly easy bow. This is what Ramon at home calls a funky bow. I am using two feet of each one of these ribbons, so 24 inches. And these are just my little scraps I showed you. I'm gonna fold them in half, they're already dovetailed, and I'm gonna pinch them in the middle and kind of pleat them together. Hold them between my thumb and my uh, forefinger there. Hold them tightly together once you get them pinched off. To see what I'm doing. Struggling here. There's always a struggle. This one was kind of wrinkled, so I was trying to work with the wire there. It's kind of flimsy, that, that ribbon. Now, the orange and white is a very good quality ribbon. It really holds its shape nicely. But I'm gonna do what I can with that checked ribbon because I really wanted to use it in this project. Now, onto the handy dandy zip ties. Love these. I'm gonna just cinch them around right in that center where I was holding them. I'm making sure that my bows are the same, my loops are the same height there before I fasten it all the way down. Then I'm gonna cut it off. Trim down my little extra here. This one I didn't didn't cut. Okay, and so now you can fluff this mess of a bow out. It looks kind of wild in the beginning. You may question your choices, um, but I assure you it will look better. So you're gonna pull things apart. I'm showing you at normal speed for a moment. Just pulling apart separating my colors so that I don't have two patterns right next to each other that's the goal anyway and then you're gonna start pulling the little ends upward pull them upward into the bow so they're gonna essentially form the base so imagine that those loops are the flower and all these little tails are the leaves so you want these leaves to go out beside your flower right that's what we want to do Sometimes these fabric pieces of ribbon will fray. You can leave it that way or you can trim it up to make it look really pretty. Okay, so now that you don't have to see all of my fluffing, because I can go on and on and on with this, I put it in a quicker speed for you, but you get the idea. You want to just kind of twist and turn and fluff. Separate your patterns as best you can, and when you get it the way you like it, I'm just going to add a little glue here so that I can get a good strong hold with my bow onto the fasteners. I'm gonna press down to make sure it goes through the fabric of the bow. I got glue on my table. Okay, 
So now you can curve down or pull straight out on your little wired ribbon. And if I didn't say that before, you definitely need a wired ribbon for this bow. But it's a great way to use your scraps, right? So now my cute little pumpkin has a little headdress. I'm gonna add a little more to it, of course. So I'm gonna take some of these blackberries and some of these orange berries that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm calling them berries, I'm not sure what it says on the pack, but that's what they look like. So you can just pull those apart easily, they're just wound together. And I'm gonna do some alternating picks of two orange and one black, and then two blacks and one orange. You can just twist those around each other and then bend the ends up and it makes a good surface for you to add your glue so you can press them down into your either into the bow or wherever you want to put yours i always like to remind people when you come over to watch my videos that what i do is for inspiration you don't necessarily have to do it the same way i do certainly if you don't like the technique or you don't like what i'm doing you don't have to i just share this for inspiration so we're gonna continue around here, just like that. And there you go. I'm only gonna use four of these. Now I wanna add a little more something to the top. It feels like it's too heavy in the center. I'm gonna kind of broaden out the bow just a little bit by adding two of these orange leaves. They, they kind of coordinate somewhere between the color of the pumpkin and the color in my ribbon because they are not exactly the same, but that's okay. That is okay. Any kind of orange works for fall and Halloween, right? So put these in wherever it's pleasing to your eye, wherever you like it, whatever brings you some joy. That's what this crafting journey is all about, right? Finding some joy, sharing, inspiring other people. So there we go. And I'm gonna add one more just in the bottom here. Just like that. Okay. So there we go so far. What do you think? Yes. I think she's very pretty. She's looking great. Ready for Halloween and happy about it. Okay. So now we're going to work on the reverse side. So because we have those little glue dots, it's very easy to take that bow off and set it aside. We're going to flip it over and start working on our fall side. Now the fall can be used early harvest, and then you can use it for Halloween, then you can flip it back around and use it all the way up until Thanksgiving. That's my idea. Okay, so same process with that glue dot. We're gonna stick them together and then stick them down. I've got some burlap leaves and another scrap of ribbon, this beautiful, beautiful ribbon. I'm so sad I'm running out of it. And it came from Dollar Tree. It's just absolutely stunning. It has like a coppery color edge on it. It's really nice. It's also a wired ribbon. I'm gonna do two feet or 24 inches. Go down, cut that off. I'm gonna dovetail it just like the other one. And then I'm gonna make the simplest bow ever for this side. Certainly, when you finish your pumpkin, you could definitely go on to use this side for anything you want. Any type of bow, you don't have to put a bow, you can put a beautiful spray or swag across the top, anything that you choose. Very simple bow, and then I'm gonna tie it in the center with a piece of jute. Just like that, always a double knot. We don't want it to come apart because if you are a aggressive bow fluffer like I am, you wanna be sure that you're not going to pull the bow completely apart. I'm a busy mama. I have little kids in my house, so I need to be sure that I save time where I can. And that's a good way to assure that I am using my time properly and I don't have to go back and redo anything. I don't have to. So you see the back of these burlap leaves have a wire on them already. You can twist them together and then it's to add a little bit of glue, just like that, and it will secure them together nicely. You can also, if you don't intend to give any dimension or fluff on those leaves, you can just pull those wires off easily on the back. I'm gonna trim off this because I'm not gonna need it to tie anything. We have our glue dots. I like the way that's gonna look. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue there and attach those together, just like so. 
a little more glue is going to attach it right onto the bow. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you're new here, I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, so again, because I had to flip my bow over, it smushed down just a little bit. I'm going to fix it just a tad. You can curl those edges or tails of the bow under with your fingers if you would like. Or when you have wire, you also have the ability to just let them lay out straight. Whichever way you choose is great. Now they're even. And this is so simple. This side is so much easier. Excuse my head. I stand up sometimes to do my uh, projects, especially when I have larger pieces like this and I need to be able to get a better view for you guys. So I stand up and sometimes my head gets in the way of the camera. Okay, there we go. Now, we're gonna add one more bit. And this is a pack of three that you can get from Dollar Tree. I got them early in the season, so you know they, they may be out, so you can use something else. I just stippled on a little bit of this copper paint. I used two coats and let it dry. And now, we are gonna add it on to the sign. You have to work very quickly when you're using hot glue and metal because it dries so fast it'll try to pop off. So I've went ahead and put it exactly where I want it and I'm just pulling it up on the edges right around the thickest parts of that metal so that I can glue it down. If you want something that's going to be permanent you can go ahead and add some super glue or anything like that. You can use Gorilla Glue in your hot glue gun and that'll hold it for a long time. Best thing about this is you can't see the glue strings. So if you make a little bit of a mess, you're not gonna see it on that pattern. What do you think? There's our harvest pumpkin. And coming up next, there's the Halloween pumpkin. All right. I like them both and I will be using both of these in my home for sure. Give me a thumbs up if you like these. <laughs> She's a beauty. She knows it. She's confident. Okay, on to the next one. We're going to use some clings from Dollar Tree. I've got some of these little thrifted and dollar spot wooden pumpkins. They're also adhesive on the back. I've got some wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. Some of these trim stickers from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted pack of paper, so you use whatever kind you like, but I'm going to use a pack of Halloween paper for our Halloween side. And then on the other side, I'm going to use some of these tiles. I got these at the thrift store. I'm going to take a Dollar Tree sign. Here you go. You can find these in any pattern that you like, but I found that the plaid or the checked one is going to be a little more versatile for what I want. I'm also going to use the little glue dots or the little uh, Velcro dots again for this project. And I've chosen this paper with the spider ribs on it. I think the dimensions of this paper happen to be pretty good, except we're going to trim down a little bit on the end. So I've just marked it with a pencil. I'm going to use my ruler to get a straight line here. I'm going to mark it, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Trimmy trim trim. All right. We're going to save our scrap, of course, because what are we? We're crafters, and we're thrifty crafters. Now. I know this is the right size, so I'm just going to lay this down, use my little cutting tool from Dollar Tree, go right over the top of that cork to cut out another piece. And we're cutting out the fall side. So we've already got our Halloween backing and we're cutting out our fall backing. And look how easily this just snaps off. Perfect. You can get your cork paper. It is already adhesive at the Dollar Tree. You can look and find it in the Crafter Square, I do believe. Now since my cardstock is a little thin and I want to have a little more dimension, I'm just using a scrap of this foam board that I already had. You can see I've done many, many projects on this board. And then I'm going to just cut out that rectangle and use my glue stick and place that glue all the way around, especially you know around the edges and corners. We want it to be even. My lines are not exactly straight here and that's okay because I've got something else I'm going to do that's going to make it look a little less noticeable. 
So here's the back, and I'm just gonna use my sanding block and just sand down that cork a little bit to make my lines nice and straight. Just like that, and that's perfect. I'm definitely gonna have to work with this cork a little bit more on further projects, because I'm really liking it. Love the texture of it. So we have our Halloween and our fall sides. Now, we're gonna go back to the Halloween side and decide what we wanna do here to decorate this piece. I know I love these little spooky ghost signs. It's so cute. It doesn't look spooky at all, which is the best part. And I'm just choosing the one that has what I think is the best surface. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of a dry brush. It's a really light brush, I guess you would say. This is my linen white chalk paint. I'm just gonna dab it in the paint on the lid there and then on the paper towel and then brushing up and down lightly and quickly all over the little sign. This is gonna dry very quickly as well, but I will set it aside and let it do its thing while we work on the background. So I'm deciding which one of these I wanna use. And I think the thinner one is gonna be the better one since the little cutout is so thick and so um, it's gonna take up so much room here. We're just gonna use these to trim this out. Okay. So we're gonna go up here and trim out the bottom. What I'm doing is just eyeballing so that I know it's got a sticker or clear backing on it. So you can go over your edge just a little bit. So I'm just very slowly eyeballing it and then I'm pressing it down and not pressing on the area that's overhanging the edge. It's gonna give it, you can see there, it gives it a trim beyond the paper, an edge beyond the paper, I guess you could say. And that's what I wanted to do because I want to mask the fact that we have some edges that are not exactly even. I'm gonna go down here and do the same exact thing. You can cut these and you can remove any little pieces of beading that you want to. So since I already had those really thick beads on the end, I'm just gonna cut out that thickest bead and then start with the thinner section. I'm just explaining to you what I'm doing, but you certainly do not have to do it this way. But this makes a nice fit and I think it um, it makes it look like it's one piece and I like that doing the same thing here and putting it down on this edge probably too much conversation and too much talk about trim work right but just so you can understand my insanity there we go see there it goes over the edges and it almost looks like a different edge I'm gonna take my black furniture repair marker Use whatever you have. You can even use chalkboard paint here. And I'm gonna color over all of the white. I'm coloring right onto foam. This is a really good marker, but because I'm coloring on foam, it's, it, you know, you know. Okay, crafter struggles. There we go. We're almost done. And there we go. Okay, so follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. We're gonna use these foam squares, which can be trimmed up to any size you like. You can see me doing that here. You can use foam dots, whatever you have. You can definitely get this sort of thing at Dollar Tree. I already have these in my stash. I'm gonna put these pieces on the thickest parts of here so that you don't necessarily see it. It's not gonna stick out. It's gonna be invisible in the back. I always like to give my, pro my projects a little bit of dimension and the fact that this is going to overlap that border that we put on. I felt like it needed to be raised up a bit. And so that's what we're doing. You can trim these down any way you want to. You can use something else, but to me, this works great. I love these little sticky squares. All right, I'm just finding my space here and then pressing it down when it's in the right spot. And you can see that the top of the ghost head and the bottom of the letters do overlap. So you know what's going on there. Okay, now we're gonna work on the fall side. These adorable little stickers, they are wall window clings and they are so good. They have so many options um, and they were gonna fit on this space. So I'm just trying to decide which one I want and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I can combine these. So I'm gonna use my pumpkin tag from the bottom or my little pumpkin um, adhesive, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna cut down a piece of cardboard paper because it's sheer 
and I want to be able to make it look white. So I'm going to use a scrap of this cardboard or poster board and put this on here. I'm going to use my little tool, which also, by the way, came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm very happy with it. It fits nicely in my little hands. And it works great for what I use it for. Trim this out without cutting off your line. I did kind of bump my corners a little bit, but I don't think it's that noticeable. We all know how to cut. You certainly can use a cutting board or whatever cutting tool you prefer. A little rotary blade. All right. So, I know I want to put this on the bottom, and I know I want to add some pumpkins to it. We want to make this a pumpkin patch. So, I'm going to use a whole bunch of these dots. These actually came with the cork board. So, I'm going to use these to see how they work. And I'm going to layer these up three high. So, right now we have one. I'm going to need some room to put the pumpkins behind it. So, I'm going to make it three thick. There we go. The second layer is down. Here's the third. Right on top. Now this is going to give us enough space that we can tuck in those little wooden stickers. Just like that. So right now nothing is pressed down. I'm trying to get my placement. Decide what colors and what shapes I won't wear. So that's what I'm doing. You can use the little cardstock. You can use any type of regular stickers. You can do some cutouts. You can do anything you like here, but I think pretty much you can find these stickers at Target Dollar Spot every year. Or Bullseye's Playground. What do you think about that? That is so cute. All right, so now we have to find some way to stick our two signs down on our the little Dollar Tree sign back there. And we're going to use the glue dots. Now, again, we are going to make sure that the prickly side is down. That's going to go down first. Okay, I've already got my pieces together. Prickly side down, and the soft side is facing upward. Now, you can use a little hot glue if you would like. And then you're going to position it in the center. And then you can press it down. Now the reason we had the prickly side down is because the soft side is going to be on the spooky side and on the fall side. And we want it to be able to stick down to the original four that are already on the sign. That's how we're going to remove them and make them interchangeable. This is a quick change collab. So this is, this is what we do. This is how we do it. You can take this off. I'm just securing my corners to make sure nothing comes loose. And it worked great. And then here we are with our fall sign. What do you think? Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Have you guys ever considered that you could use a coloring book with sayings and pretty designs to color your pictures, maybe with markers, and then put some type of a, a thicker something behind it? And then you can make your own little cutouts. All right, third project. I'm going to use this little squatty candle stand. I'm going to use a Halloween sign from Target and a pumpkin patch sign from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use some of these ornaments from Dollar Tree. I've got some picks from Dollar Tree. These are just some little random pieces of sticks and bobs from my collection. And then I'm going to use three of these whatever these are, fall rounds with leaves on them. I've cut my floral foam ball in half and I'm putting it right in the center. I'm gonna take my first ring and put it down. I'm gonna push my leaves outward as much as possible. Make sure that it's nice and even. We're not gluing this down. You don't even have to glue it. You can change it for another time. Now we've gotta find some way to put our signs down in here. I'm going to use this little stick. You can use a popsicle stick, anything you want to use to make a standing or a, a pick sign out of these signs. I'm going to use scrap of ribbon from a project we did earlier. I'm going to cut these pieces off because we're going to need 
a little extra something something to hold this down to secure it. I'm gonna use my glue gun, press this down, try to get it centered because I did not have it centered the first time. I'm gonna put a little glue over the top and then a little piece of this ribbon. If you don't have scraps of ribbon, you can use a piece of scrap paper that you have to help hold it in place. And there you go. Welcome to our haunted house. I'm gonna put it aside and let it dry. I'm gonna work on this one. Because this sign is heavier, I'm gonna use a dowel rod, a little piece that I have here. I think it came in a popsicle or cake pop kit or something like that. Yeah, think outside the box. Set it aside, let that glue set up nicely. We're gonna start with our Halloween side first. You can take the little hangers off of these balls here. And there's glittery ones, there's shiny ones, and the mat. I decided to use the mat. These little sticks will fit down in here. Make sure that you find the right sticks to fit in there. Clip them down if you want to. And then you're gonna be hot glued them, of course. For the next ring, we're gonna cut an inch section out, remove it, overlap it about a half an inch, and then we're going to have our next layer. You're gonna press those together, and you're just gonna hold them there and you can clamp them down just like that until the glue sets up. It'll kind of melt, it'll kind of, you know, do its thing and you'll have a different diameter to go on top. So you can stack it on top. All right, so here we are stacking the next one. So now you can see that it's kind of tiered. And again, we're not gluing that. We're not gonna glue that down, it's not necessary. For the third one, we're gonna use pieces. We're gonna cut them off and we're gonna just hot glue around the top until it's almost completely covered. As you can see here, part of my footage did not make it, but you get the idea. You're gluing it down just like that. A little hot glue on the back and putting it down, just like that. You don't wanna press it flat. We wanna give a little, leave a little height in there. Then we're gonna press our pick down in there and you can start using some of these little ornament picks that we made. You can just press them down wherever you like. You can press them under your layers if you want, but I just wanted to add the decorative pieces mainly on the top because it makes it easier to be removed because we are gonna be taking these out to change it over to our fall version of this little, I don't know what you wanna call this. What, what would you call this? because we don't have a candle on it, so we actually couldn't call it that. I'm gonna do some in the back too, to cover it up. If you wanna use something to cover up your ribbon back there, you can certainly do that. You can paint the back, you can add another piece of paper on the top of it, but just, um, you know, for your finished look, you need to do that. But I was just trying to get this project done for you to give you the idea, so there you go. You would want to do something with the back, obviously. That's not pretty. And this is what our Halloween side would be. All right. And also, I wanted to add, if you're going to use glue, use a little bit of glue on your little decorative pieces that you add. Just a little bit, because you're going to want to remove them. This is what that is going to look like, if you can see it like that. And then we're going to pull it apart. So here we go taking out all the excess, leaving our basic bottom there. So we still have our foam and we still have all of our leaves are still on there. Now we're gonna go and add the fall pick. Gonna press that down there, try to make it kind of flat onto the leaves and start adding in some simple greenery. The greenery does not have to be glued. And if you do glue it, you wanna use a tiny bit of glue, not much at all. These are just some scrap pieces that I had left over. You can certainly do something that's a little more symmetrical if you choose. Whatever you like, that's what you wanna put in yours. I'm gonna use little orange pieces and I have a little, just a little random, I think it's a mom. Thank you so much, Teresa, for this wonderful idea. And I'm so glad to have been part of it with you guys. Come back and see me again soon. Bye. Today I have 10 new Halloween DIYs with cats, bats, and more. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. This is our last Halloween video. All right, number one, we have a black cat sign. 
we're going to start off with a little bit of ribbon. Whatever type you have is good. doesn't have to be wired. We're going to use a glue stick or some adhesive spray. I have a Mod Podge little scraper and a utensil to cut. A block that was thrifted, believe it or not. And I'm just giving you a measurement here so you can get an idea. And this came off the back of a blanket I got at Walmart. It was on the packaging and I liked it so I cut it out. Now I'm just going to clean up a little bit on the back. There was some sticker residue so I wanted to get that off. Wipe it away and get all that off of there. Now it's nice and clean. And then you can just decide which side you want to go down. You can have your sign so that it will be reversible. Or you can cover up the back side. Whichever one you like. I'm going to trace it out on that cardboard paper there. And just cut it out. I've decided to use my spray adhesive for this. So you need to cover your surface before you put it on. I've already done that. And then I'm just going to place down the paper. Once you put it on, it is there. You're not going to be able to move it. So if you're not sure of yourself, use a glue stick because you have a lot more time there to move things around. I'm just making sure everything is flat and that it is getting a good, nice adhesion there. And then I'm going to take my sander and go around the edges and just get off whatever is left. I've decided that I like the black and white ribbon as a trim to go around the block. Now, this ribbon is not quite wide enough going to fix that. You could always paint your edges first if you would like, but if you didn't do that, then I'm going to show you a way that you can do it. No problem. We're just going to go around with that pretty ribbon till we get back to the end and glue it down. Now if you have paint pens or furniture markers or a fine paintbrush and you feel comfortable with paint you can certainly use that but I'm taking my black furniture repair marker and just going to go around all of the edges on each side of the ribbon on all of the sides so that I have a nice finished look and then you can barely even tell now this is a part of a tag that I got hundred years ago both of the stickers as well from when I was back in my scrapbooking days I cannot tell you where I got those from but you can pretty much find these types of tags anywhere you can get things that are similar at Dollar Tree and you can use any type of dimensional or flat sticker that you like you could even hot glue some type of an embellishment if you would like just use your imagination here I happen to like this little cat so I'm gonna try to center him there and then press him down you can always use a little hot glue if you want to make sure nothing falls apart but this is staying here for me pretty nicely. Number two is a lighted pumpkin stand. This came from Dollar Tree. It is white. It looks very cute as it's on. It would look nice in a baby's nursery, I think. But a little bit of black paint can take this from cute to spooky. But spooky in a good way. So I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol, as you should with everything you get, clean it really well. Especially if you're going to use paint or any type of adhesive on it, it's important that you get every surface inside and out so that you don't have any oils from your hands or any dirt or anything like that that would keep your adhesives and your paints from sticking. So once that's done and it's dry, we're going to take it outside and spray paint it. I used one good coat and let it dry. And now I'm going to use this. Now I found this at Dollar Tree. It is some type of a sticky strip. I lost my packaging, so I don't have it to show you. Then you're going to need some type of a mesh. You can use mesh ribbon. You can use um, anything that you have. And I do have some of this uh, mesh already. I'm going to use this. Can't recall where I got it from. Probably Goodwill. I'm going to cut these in strips. Now, they're double-sided sticky. And they work pretty good. I've used them to organize around my desk, and I'm very happy with them. It's kind of a gel-like, um, squishy substance. I can't really tell you what that is. I'm going to go around all underneath the lip on the inside and around the bottom, not overlapping where the openings are for the little stars and moons, so that I have something to attach my fabric to. You know, you can't use hot glue on this type of thing. So I found that this is a perfect solution. Now, if you have little command stickies or double-sided tape would probably work for this. Um, you know, just kind of try. Use your imagination and use what you already have. And then I've got some 
paper shreds there stuck to my paint, but it does come off. And then I just press that mesh down in there so that it covers up all the spaces. I'm going to take my little light, tea light from Dollar Tree in a two pack, and kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's lit up. Now that's going to how it's, how it's going to look. You can barely see the mesh, but it does give it a little a dimmer look, and I like that. If you want to put something on the top, you can use it as a little pumpkin, artificial pumpkin sitter. And I just have this pumpkin bell. I'm going to take some of this shred here. This is black. Not can't recall where I got it, but you can get this kind of stuff at Dollar Tree all the time. And I'm just going to set the little bell right in top, trim around there, and then you'll see the end result at the end of the video for this one. It's kind of hard to show it. I think he looks really cute there. Number three, we're going to make a calendar sign. It's been a while, y'all. Love using calendar art for signs. You're going to need some stickers, whatever type you like, whatever matches whatever picture you have. I want mine to have dimensions, so I'm going to use the bats. I've got some of this stretchy lace trim that came from a thrift store. Of course, I have my calendar, and it is the October 2022 farmhouse calendar artwork. I'm going to use a square piece that I have that came, I think it came from Target originally, and I had already spray painted it black. It did have metal on the front, but I painted it for another project and didn't use it, and it works perfectly here. Perfect frame. So I'm going to take my glue stick. You can use whatever you would like. I don't recommend the adhesive spray at this point because it's going to give you a permanent hold, and if you don't get it centered, it's going to be crooked from here on out. So I'm going to use this and go around the edges too. I tried to not make you see all of that. And when it dries, it's clear. So you don't have to worry about if you go past where your calendar is going to lay down. I'm just going to press it down gently with my hands. I have my little roller that came from Plaid. I'm an ambassador for Plaid now. So I got lots of goodies and they They've sent me some really nice stuff to work with that I'm enjoying. Just going to roll that out, make it nice and clean and no bubbles. What about that? Very nice. Okay, so now I want to trim this out. There's little holes at the top, you know, a calendar. You have to have a place to hang it. So since there's a hole up there, I want to cover it. And I think this lace will look really cute. If you've seen my other Halloween videos, you know that I've done a lot of... Um, well, several little witchy type projects this year, and I'm loving that. I'm loving the little frilliness and the, you know, that type of thing, adding that in with my projects. Last year was a little more farmhouse. It didn't have a lot of extra stuff on it, but this year I've just decided to just go ahead and make some pretty stuff, or what I would see as pretty. More feminine, maybe, I guess is the better word for it. But you do whatever you like. You can use a plain ribbon. You don't have to use ribbon at all. Whatever you want to do here is absolutely fine. So we do the top and the bottom. And then I've got some of these little dimensional stickers. Now you can get the little wood ones at Dollar Tree. I'm going to press those down. And the one on the top I do end up moving. But I put it back on later and you'll see that. These are some berry picks from Dollar Tree. A very nice silver and black and I, I think they come in some other colors as well but I'm gonna do them just like this this is so simple there's no arranging really to this I'm gonna take a zip tie and then go right over the center trim it down and then I want to make a bow and I thought you know what let's go let's go on with the mesh here let's go with that theme and go ahead and try to make a mesh bow so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two leaps on each side. I'm just holding it in the middle so that if you count the ends there beyond my thumbs, there's two on the left and two on the right. I'm going to cut this off because we're not worried about tails right now. Pinch it up into the center. I'm going to use a zip tie to hold this down and this is going to look a little bit like a layered bow because we're going to have four little ears, two on each side really easy. I did get this mesh at the thrift store, but I'm sure you can find it at any crafting store. You might even can get it at Walmart. I don't know. I haven't looked. It's been a long time since I've been Walmart shopping since I'm able to just do it online and they'll pick your groceries up. 
makes it so much easier. Do y'all do that? Have y'all ever tried it? I highly recommend it. You'll spend less money, just in my opinion, because if I'm in the store, I always grab that extra stuff that I really don't need, just because I have to have it, right? I have to have it. Now I'm gonna use another piece of this mesh ribbon to just tie this bow onto the picks. I'm just trimming down and deciding how I want these little tails to lay. Do I want one on the top and one on the bottom? Do I want them sticking up on top like bat wings or do I want them on the bottom? I think I want them on the bottom. So we're going to use some hot glue, put it on top of that trim. And I try to be, I don't go overboard with glue, but on things like this, it, they're a little bit bulky. You kind of need that glue to make sure that it doesn't fall off. If you're going to put it outside, you want to use Gorilla Glue. Okay, so there's the bat. I put him back on. And then you can trim up the tails. You can move the tails around. You know, you want it to look high end, so you want it to be nice. Everything in its place. And this is how it's going to look. Can you believe that was made from just a piece of artwork out of a calendar? Hmm. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you there. Project number four is going to be a pumpkin hoop sign. All right, I have a variety of ribbons here. Some are were given to me by my neighbor. One came from Dollar Tree. I have a five inch embroidery hoop. All of my hoops have come from the thrift store. I've got some of this, uh, these little pumpkins that are plaid and they came from Dollar Tree. I found them very late in the game. Then a little scrap of fabric here. You're going to take apart your hoop just like this. Flip your fabric over. The pretty side goes down. Just trying to make sure I don't have any wrinkles there. And I'm going to press that inner ring down. And it's going to give us this really pretty polka dot front. I'm going to take that little screw there and tighten it all up. And then turn your scissors sideways and trim that off. That'll give you a nice clean cut and you won't be able to see it at all from the front. Again, with a furniture marker, I'm gonna go around my edges just like this. This one's really easy and quick to do because it's black on the background, so you don't have to be careful about smearing it or getting it on anything that, you know, might make a mess out of your picture. So there you go. You can go around the edges if you would like with that black marker, if you want to. And I'm just going to take my little pumpkin and put it down and decide if I want an extra embellishment in the middle. You can use stickers or cutouts, whatever you would like. And then with a little hot glue, I'm going to place it toward the bottom. I've decided not to embellish my pumpkin because I want to put a little bow on the top and I don't want it to be just too crazy for a small piece. So I'm going to take some pieces and I'm going to add a little bit of jute in. These are about five or six inches long. If I had to guess, I did not measure it. But I don't want to use anything that's bigger because, like I said, it'll be top heavy and it'll lean forward when you hang it up or when you try to sit it up, it won't be very balanced. Go ahead and finish off your ends any way you would like. If you want to dovetail, you can do that. And then make your stack. Just crisscross back and forth however you want to do it. You don't have to add the jute or you can add more or you could add some raffia, whatever you like there. Or you could use your own bow, whatever type you choose. I'm just going to get this tied in the middle, squeeze it tightly, and then I'm going to save my pieces of jute. I'm going to leave them long because we're going to use that to tie it onto that screw area. This is going to cover up that little closure tightening screw. You won't, you won't see it, and it'll help our bow stay on the top. Trim it down where it needs to be trimmed. Just look at it and see what needs to go where. You can move things around. And this is how it looks. Now for hanging purposes, you can go ahead and take a piece of string and tie it just like this or any type of a way that you want to hang that up. You can also, instead of hanging it up, use it on your tiered tray, just like the little cat sand that we did or the little cat project, he could go on a tiered tray as well. Number five is the haunted house hoop. So some of this is going to be repetitive. I'm going to use a little sign that came off of a broken pick. I used it last year in a different project. This is some scrap fabric. This is my larger embroidery hoop, and I think it is a, I think it says 10 inches there, is that 10 inch? 
take it apart just like the other. We're going to do the same process. You're going to be a pro at this. You're going to lay it out. Now, with stripes like this, you want your pattern to be straight up and down. So I just used my screw at the top to give me an idea of where my stripes would line up. Tightened it down, and now you can pull a little bit to make sure that there's no wrinkles left in there and that your lines are straight. Then you're going to do the same thing. Turn those scissors sideways, cut along that line. It's got a nice, pretty finished look there. We're going to put this sign down with some hot glue. Bam, bam, bam. All right. Center it as best as you can. And then place it down. You could use a pumpkin or anything on here. Any type of a cutout. You could even use like cardstock cutout if you wanted to. Whatever you want to use. So I know I'm going to use that black pick. It was left from the other little pack. Now I'm going to take this raffia. And you've seen this on other projects I've done. I'm going to wrap this around my hand. And I'm doing this about, I don't know, what do you what do you think? Does that look like about 10 times? Probably about 10 times. So I've made my loops with it. And I'm just holding on to it so it doesn't fall apart. I'm going to cut it and cut another piece to go in there. I'm going to go around the part that I was holding because that's where my loose ends are. And I'm going to tie it off. This stuff is pretty strong. I think I got this from Dollar Tree, but I can, I'm not 100% sure. But it's good. Wherever I got it from is very good quality. It's very strong. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in my hands, like kind of like you're making a tassel. and Cut those off so they'll be nice and even. And then I know I want these to go together, so I'm going to take that extra long piece that I had and I'm going to tie it around the same as we did in the other little project. You're just tying it around that screw. It helps disguise the screw and it's a, it's just a good place for you to put things. You know, we're, instead of just using glue, it's extra strength by being tied on. So I'm going to slip the stem right through there where it's tied and then just reinforce it with a little bit of glue there so that it doesn't flop around at all. And then you can kind of fluff it out if you would like. I'm going to take that same stretchy piece of trim. And I'm going to start going around my edge. I'm going to start underneath where the pick is so we don't have any gaps. And because this is stretchy, it very easily is manipulated to follow the curve on the edge. If you use a straight piece of ribbon, you're going to have to do some gathers. Look how cute! That is too cute. But a little spider should definitely live here. I tried the bat and I just wasn't feeling it, so I think the spider is going to be perfect. Right there in the top. What do you think? Very cute. You can hang this the same way with a little piece of tied jute, if you would like. Or you can just hang it off the edge. Number six is the black cat pumpkin sign. Quite possibly the best, in my opinion, project I have done the entire Halloween series. We're going to start with this pumpkin from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a little bit of pumpkin orange Waverly chalk paint that came from Plaid. Thank you very much, Plaid. Then I have a little bit of this antiquing wax that I already have. I'm going to put a few drops in here because I want to muddy up this orange paint and give it a more realistic looking dirty pumpkin look. So when I get it the color I like, just like this, I'm going to start brushing it on there. It's just a more natural color, I think, than the one that was already on the pumpkin. And it's going to match the fabric that we're using much better. So two coats of that and let it dry. And then I'm going to take the medium size embroidery hoop and this beautiful cat fabric. I'm going to use this little kitty. There's a bunch of scenes on here. It is wrinkled, but you can see in just a moment how to get the wrinkles out. Just like we said before, pull a little bit, press down, pull, and you're going to tighten that screw up. We're going to cut it out. Same process. This is your third one. You are professional at this right now, right? Professional. So you're going to go all the way around it, and you see it's going to eventually live in the middle of the pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and use a paint pen for this. I'm using this paint pen or paint marker 
to go around the edge of this because I have finally had to say goodbye to my black marker. I used all the ink out of my repair marker. And I go all the way around the edges and you can either go around the edges with that on the sides with that or you can go use a little bit of paint and I did use paint um, but you won't see that on the camera it's just a very dark I think it's called pavement now I'm going to use a wet wipe use whatever brand whatever kind you like I mean I think they all pretty much work the same way I'm just using one I had and you're gonna put a little bit of wax on there and we're gonna make some curves we're gonna add dimension to this pumpkin because I don't want the cartoonish look that we had before and you can see just by going over the curves, just by fanning it out on the ends and going around the edges, that pumpkin looks so much better. Oh yeah, I did paint that stem, that brown also, I forgot. Okay, so to make a pick on the top, we're going to spray paint that little stem black. Here's my little finish centerpiece. While our pick is drying, we're going to embellish. A little bit of glue, we're going to put this down. You can glue this any way you want to. You can put it all the way around the rim, or you can just do a couple little dots like I did. Whatever you want to do. Then, I have these. They were from way back in the scrapbook days. I'm surprised they still are sticky, but they are. You don't have to use stickers. If you don't have something like this, I chose this because it matches the print. You can see in the print over there behind the pumpkin that it has the kind of viney look. So that's why I chose it. But you can use a pen and freehand this. It's very easy to do this. Or, you know, you could possibly find these stickers. But I'm telling you, I've had them a long time. I love that you can add your own little pieces here to get your own little style. And that was really fun to me. And they're a little bit glittery, so that's nice. And I did go around with my paint pen and bump the edges uh, intentionally to make it look a little more rustic because that there's a, like a little rustic look in the background of that cat fabric. So I did do that. Now, after these are nice and dry, be sure they're dry, I'm just going to cut them off the big pick and I'm going to crisscross them over in the middle. Just no particular way, just as long as there's equal amount each side. Another zip tie is how we're going to close it off. I'm going to seal these together nicely right in the center. And then clip off the excess. We don't need that part. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look down in the description box below. Thank you. All right, so now I know I want to add some greenery to my little stem pieces here. And I had some of this black left from our witch projects. And I want to use those definitely on here. We're going to just crisscross the stems on the bottom. I pulled this off of a piece that came from a different project we did. And then I'm going to zip tie that together. So I've got the beautiful colors that coordinate with what's going on in our cat fabric. I love that. And I'm just going to spread those out a little bit. And I'm going to take some of the darker leaves that fell off of something else I had. See, I keep everything. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. You know how it goes if you craft. Then you're just going to keep adding until you get it the way you want it to look in the middle. And then again with a big dollop of glue, I'm going to put this off to the side. I do not want to cover up my stem or anything else. We're going to let it dry completely. Then I'm going to take this little wooden spider. He's from a sticker from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add him right on the leaves in the top. And then you can use a hanger on the back. You can do this or hang it any way that you like to hang it. You can put jingle blocks on the back and make it a stander if you want to. It could be a standing sign. Oh, I love this. Project number seven is the full moon tray sign. I hope y'all are getting lots of goodness out of this video because I worked my tail off for days. Days, I tell you. But I love it. I love crafting. Okay, so we have a little piece of scrap foam, we have some fabric, we have that sign, which I got just for the moon. I'm going to pull that right off the top, save the other parts for another project. I've chosen this little kitty cat for the next sign, and he is proudly standing on top of the pumpkin. I'm going to call it a she. I'm getting she vibes from this pumpkin. I'm going to use some Mod Podge 
and this is just matte Mod Podge. I'm going to put this down on my scrap piece of foam board and then we're going to put that fabric right on top. Just press it out with your hands and then you can roll it or you can use your tools. This is my little plaid sent the little tool to me and I use it on some things. Then I'm going to go all over the top. I want this fabric to be stiff because we're going to cut this with a blade. and I want it to be nice and stiff. It's not really easy to get a precision cut in my opinion or in my experience if you use scissors on foam board. Yeah. So we're going to take this tray that I've had forever and spray paint it with the matte paint. We're going to come over here to the cat, make it easier on ourselves by cutting off the excess and getting rid of it. Cut off the bigger sections and then start doing your fussy cuts. And this is why I'm using the little blade here. You can go around the ears. And I won't bore you with the entire thing, but you can see how this works. That fabric is stiff now. Now I'm just going to use my scissors and cut off the back part of the white that's showing through, just trimming it a little. And I'm going to take the same black acrylic marker and I'm going to go all around my edges because I don't want that white. I don't, I don't want that to show on my sign, so we're going to get rid of all of that. And I think even the black foam board has white on the inside, so yeah, that wouldn't have helped. So I'm going to put a little bit of paper on the back of that and glue it down, and then I'm going to fill in the hole with just a little bit of this lightweight spackling, also Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use my little silicone spatula to clean it up so it's flat in the front. After it is completely dry, I'm going to start putting a little bit of paint to cover the hole up. I'm just going to use this yellow paint that I already had and just kind of dot it over the top. And then I do go back with a white and clean up that orange, the orange edge so that it's nice and clean. Once the paint is dry, we can start assembling a little bit. So I am not sure where I got this little doily thing from. I have no idea, but I've had it forever in my Halloween stash because I use it underneath things, you know, to fancy it up. I'm just showing you the difference in the size of the Jenga blocks. The smaller one's from Dollar Tree and the larger one is from the thrift store, so I'm not sure where it came from originally. But I know it's an off-brand because it doesn't have the little Jenga imprint on it. So we're going to use that to give it some height and hold it up against, um, off the tray. And we're going to do the same thing with the cat. All right, so we're going to put a little pocket on the bottom so that we have some way to hold some other goodies. So I'm going to use the rest of that scarf and we have a project where I'm using a scarf. I had to cut it in half. So one scarf, two projects, you're going to see shortly. And I'm just going to tie it on the side and then tack it with some glue here and there so that it doesn't slide on here. Now this is not actually going to hold all of what we put down but it's going to hold everything in. It's going to contain it, in other words. And I'm going to move that little side over to cover up the bottom. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. This is, you know, it's inspiration. All my videos are for inspiration. If you like it and want to do it exactly, you just go right on ahead and at least give me a shout out for it. But if not, do your own thing, you know. A couple of those blocks on the bottom will help me support the stuff that I'm packing in here. This is just some more shred. I'm going to shove it down in there and decide where I want the cat and the moon to be. I'm going to use a little bit of the, I think that's E6000, the jewelry formula, but it, I think all of it works the same. The tip's just a little more narrow and hot glue on each of those pieces and then place them down where I think they look nice. So the cat and the pumpkin are sitting in that black stuff. I'm going to add one of these little Dollar Tree witches hats. I think this was in a three or four pack. And I've had it since last year. Went ahead and used it. I'm trying to use some things up. I have some of these yellow and orange flowers that are from the thrift store. You can get very similar things right at Dollar Tree. So no worries about that. But I love the colors. I think they look really good with the yellow moon and the orange in the pumpkin and in the scarf. So I'm just going to tuck those around in the bottom. And then this is how that little sign will look. You can hang that by putting the same type of tie on the back or any type of hanger that works for you. The next project is the glow-in-the-dark haunted house box. 
All right, I'm going to take a Dollar Tree little shadow box thingy. These are some glow-in-the-dark stickers that I've had for a while. They still work. And then these, I think, came from Dollar General, but I've had them a long time. Okay, so we're going to pull the leaf out and its little foam backer. And then if you press down on the back of that box, it'll come away from the frame. Go ahead and take your nails out if yours was nailed in. Sometimes they're nailed and sometimes they're just hot glued. I'm going to take this really cute skeleton scarf and I'm going to cut it and then I do trim it down smaller and then glue it onto the backing. You can use construction paper, you can use a scarf from Dollar Tree, you can use wrapping paper, you can use cardstock, anything you want to use here. You could even use shelf liner if you wanted to, just whatever you want to use. Be sure that you don't have a lot of bulk left. Slice the corners and then lay them down flat because we have to be able to put this back in the backing. You don't want to make it too thick or it won't fit back in there. Then I'm just going to make a little scene. You can see through it so it almost looks ghostly to me. Now one thing I did here is um, I put them down with hot glue and thinking that the hot glue would dry and you couldn't see it but you could still see it. So you might want to consider using a double stick tape or less hot glue just learn from my mistake here i still think it's adorable but it could have looked a little bit nicer a little bit neater had i known ahead of time but i didn't okay so now you just push that down once you get your little scene the way you like it push it down turn it over and shove it back down in that frame mine's staying perfectly so i'm not going to glue it i'm going to take the smallest of my dots and go in each corner then I'm going to divide the distance between each one again and then further and further and further until I get as many of those dots on there as I want to. This gives me close enough to equal space between each one that my OC don't want me nuts. Okay, so you want to charge it by a bright light first. And then when you turn your lights down, it glows. Number nine is a candle holder. All right, so we're going to use some Mod Podge for this project. This is a, I think this came from Dollar Tree. It doesn't have a sticker on it. And then the, this scarf that I had used in the other project, this is one I had actually cut it down and then used what I needed on the candle and then the rest of it was used in the sign. So I got one ahead of the other, but you know, you get the point. You're gonna cut off as much as you need to use here. Leave yourself a little excess. Get your alcohol and your paper towels. Clean this up really well. Then I'm going to take some of that Mod Podge and I'm going to put it in on one little section and decide how I want my base to lay or my hurricane or whatever you want to call this. And I'm trying to line the bottom of it up with the edge on the bottom with the trim from the fabric. So you can see down there on the bottom that I'm trying to line it up there. Now this is a... <laughs> You're going to have to take some time and be patient and just give yourself some grace because you're going to have to finagle this around to get those lines and stripes to stay straight or you will have crooked waves all over the place. It took me some time and I'll just be honest about that right now. Um, I edited a lot of that out so you didn't have to see that kind of a struggle, but you can still see what I'm doing here. I'm having to, to pull it and press it out, add a little bit of glue, pull it, press it out, add some glue. And when I get it exactly how I want it, I'll go ahead and put that top coat on there. It'll dry pretty hard. The excess is not going to have any glue on it. It'll be trimmed off later, so I'm just going to tuck it in on the top. I'm going to add a little extra glue here on the side where they overlap and then continue to trim off the excess because I don't want it to look bulky and, you know, just nasty in the back. I want it to look high end, like I always say. So here it is dry, hard as a rock. I'm going to go around and trim the top, leaving just a little bit of a lip. You can use a glue stick, you can use double-sided tape, or you can just fold it under. Whatever type of glue you want to use, you can use. You can even use some more Mod Podge to get that top down if you would like. So now, the fun part. I'm going to embellish it with some stickers. These did come from the Target Dollar Spot last year, but I got them at Dirt Cheap because it's an over, you know, it's an overstock store, so they get last year's things this year and this year's stuff we'll get next year. You know, you get the gist. I'm going to start by putting the center P from Happy 
in what I think is the center of the vase. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Halloween. And it helps to have the lines because it kind of gives me an idea of, you know, where it should be placed. I'm just pressing those out. And these are kind of felt. They feel like felt. So they're real um, pliable and easy to, to use here. Then I'm just going to go down the side too. And press them down in place. And then this is how it's going to look. And we're going to add a candle to it. And I'll show you how that looks. And this is just a little LED. And in the end, you'll see what it looks like. Project number 10, easiest one, is an easy treat jar. This is so simple. So I've got a jar of candy corn or harvest mix. I'm going to take one of these little jelly jars. I think it's, what is this, a pint maybe? Um, one cup size. I'm going to have the ring in the top for that. I'm going to take one of these rub-ons from Dollar Tree. And then a scrap of fabric, and I have a variety over there. I'm going to clean our glass up really well with the alcohol and paper towels. This is going to help your little transfer to stay on there. And I've used these transfers from Dollar Tree for so many things, but this is the first time I've actually put it on, you know, what it is basically intended for, which is what they say is glass. It came off so easy. Be sure that you hold it still so you don't pull anything, you know, before it's down there, before the whole thing is down or you will tear it. Okay, so once it's all rubbed down, this is how it's gonna look. And it came out really nice. Okay, so I have spray painted that ring and let it dry. The seal doesn't have to be spray painted because it's going to be covered up by the fabric. I've put the candy down in the jar and I've chosen this polka dot fabric that I used on something else. When you screw the lid on, it's going to look like this. Then you can trim it off. I did trim it twice to make sure I got it nice and short so you could see my, my little transfer. And this is how it looks. How cute. Any little kid would love that. Or even your, your friends at work. Okay, so here we go. And this is my last new content Halloween. I'll be loading up some mega Halloween videos for y'all if you want to get caught up. And it's time for our 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So here are the rules. You must be subscribed. You must be a U.S. resident. And I want you to tell me in the comments below two things. Your favorite project that I have made since the very beginning of my channel. And I want you to leave me your favorite Halloween emoji beside it. Okay, you got it? Further rules will be in the description box below. So thank you all so very much for stopping by, for following me, for supporting me, for subscribing and sharing. I appreciate it so much more than you will ever know. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!